Beautiful weather set the scene for your number one ranked Cougars in the quarterfinal round of the NAIA Football Championship Series. USF rolled to a 30-3 victory over number 10 Northwestern and opened the game with their best drive of the season. 16 plays, 75 yards, chewing up 8 minutes and 47 seconds, resulting in a Nick Ferrer to Justin Green touchdown. It doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, it was. Of course, we, we had a, a Daytona Beach uh, day weather, you know, uh, compared to the week before. So it was a good day for football. We were ready to play. Uh, Northwestern, outstanding football team. Good way to start the game. A nice sustained drive and chewed up most of the first quarter. And then our defense took over from there. The only thing they got uh, after we scored was a kickoff return. And, Good field position, which resulted in a field goal, which that was the end of their day on their offensive side. Their defense pretty much controlled things. With a short field and the Cougars figuring out the Red Raider offense, senior strong safety Lee Stewart was flying around the field, helping to hold Northwestern to just a field goal. I thought Lee played his best football game of his career. Uh, man, he was all over the field. He was making tackles. He was knocking down passes. He was. Uh, Great coverage, uh, he played fast, he played tough. Um, again, you know, a guy that uh, is, is now winding down his senior year, you want him to be playing his best football, he certainly is doing that. I mean, it's playoff time, so being a senior, I know my time clock's ticking. I don't want to go out uh, in the first round, second round, whatever. So I just try to bring maximum energy to every rep. And a lot of the plays did come to me and they tried to test me real early and I just wasn't going for it. <laughs> I think most teams try to come after me like with the deep ball and things like that, just because like every other, like both corners and the free safety and Spencer, they all have more picks than me and everything like that or more pass breakups and everything. But I'm ready for any other challenge. Uh, my, my type of game is like filling the run and helping the boundary out and done and those guys with the run. So I, w I wouldn't doubt if every other team that we play from here on out tries to test me deep. Passing the test this past Saturday was receiver Dan Rixey, who played one of the best games of his career, recording four catches for 111 yards and two touchdowns. He was named the offensive player of the game. Well, he's an outstanding athlete. He's a great physical talent. Uh, and he has really developed uh, in year two as an outstanding receiver. Um, he and Rocky both have had their share of injuries this year and have missed uh, a number of things. Finally, we're you know, getting everybody healed up. Uh, Rocky, I think, will be 100% this week. Uh, Danny has been here in the, in the, the playoff run. So, uh, and then you got to have the guy to put it there, and, and Nick Ferrer is uh, simply the best. That's the truth. Junior linebacker Eric Dunton was named defensive player of the game, but stealing the show was the newly inserted turnover chain. Junior Stan Jackson created the chain and wanted to join the party. He did that with his interception to end the third quarter, and it was sensational. Unbelievable play. He's a tremendous athlete. He's got great speed. He plays so fast. He plays with passion. He enjoys playing the game and it's fun to watch him play. Ryan Johnson was out last week and tweaked an ankle. He'll be back this week. But generally the three, uh, he and Willie and, and uh, Stan and Ryan, they all, all rotate and keep each other fresh. Willie and Stan had to go the distance last week and uh, they did and played outstanding football. Stan Jackson getting that pick. I don't know if other guys remember that or not, but Stan also had a similar pick to that in the spring game where he tipped one to himself and then ran out of the back of the end zone and just went crazy and things like that. But I love the energy that Stan brings and it helps the other team. So the turnover chain just really brought a lot of swag to everybody. So it was just nice having that excitement. And when Lee first burst onto the scene, it was the pinnacle of excitement. Working as a number two safety during his sophomore year, when his number was called, better believe Mr. Stewart was ready. Being a sophomore, uh, I was a young mind and I knew the coaches didn't really have too much film on me or didn't know what I was capable of. So I just wanted to bring that trust to them. And like you said, the Marion game when I had that pick, like before that, I was talking to Seth Stewart, which was my best friend. He's still my, currently my best friend. And it was his senior year and we were just talking like, 
it, it was it was a great game all game and we came out with the victory 45 42 i think it was and i sealed the game with a pick but he was the Cesto was the first person i ran up to and gave him a hug and everything i told him i got his back always and that that play was for him and last year versus morningside in the naia fcs quarterfinal game while fending off a back injury lee recorded a career best 12 tackles uh, yeah, that game, those guys came in and played hard, no doubt. And we knew they were going to come in and play hard. Those guys were like top offense in the nation that I think that year. And so we knew we had to battle some ups and downs that game. And I think uh, their senior, number nine last year, he would not drop a pass no matter how many times we, <laughs> we hit him. So he was kind of getting fresh. He was kind of getting frustrating for our defense. But uh, uh, I ended up getting hurt uh, somewhere in like the third quarter or whatnot with a back injury, I had back spasms and whatnot. And while I was getting treatment, I just knew my team needed me. So I, I could not just sit out that whole game. I think I was just seeing the field more clearly a lot because they, they wouldn't bring a lot of guys to come out and block me. So they would bring a lot of guys to try to block Lucas or double Lucas because Lucas was averaging three sacks a game last year. He was going nuts in the nation. So I think Lucas and Dunton and Nashawn and those guys to the boundary really just opened up a lot of opportunity for me, so I just made the most of the, every opportunity. Stewart's injuries from a year ago kept him from starting in last year's national championship game. Blake ended up starting for me. Uh, he did a great job, no doubt. He got maybe two weeks to prepare, so I was in his ear letting him know like what to expect, go in with confidence, I'm trying to get his confidence high. And I mean, he did a tremendous job, but uh, Going into Daytona, it was definitely an emotional ride for me just because I didn't know if I was going to play and how much I was going to play and things like that and how I was going to feel on the day of. So I only actually practiced the day, our last practice before the national championship was my only practice leading up to that game. And um, I didn't know what to really expect. I was trying to pound in as much film as I can or find out what Baker did here, find out what Baker did there, anything to give me a lead on what I could do to be successful. but. Uh, when Blake started, I kind of was on the sideline, just motivate myself. Like when you get in here, don't even think about your injuries. Just go make plays like as you normally would. I think it was maybe the third possession of the game. I, I was riding the bike on the first and the second possession to try to get loose and things like that. And Blake was going out there doing a great job. I think they went three and out a couple of times. And then Coach Didier gave me the chance to put me in. So. I went out there and I had the knee brace on and back spasms were taken care of and everything like that. So I just try to make those things like clear my mind and just focus on the job at that hand. So when Lee found out that this week's opponent was going to be the Mustangs from Morningside, he didn't waste any time getting back to work. I've actually watched a couple of their films. Uh, I got right to it on Sunday. I, I don't like to let the days miss me by, but they, they look real similar to Northwestern's offense from last week, but they just play a lot faster and they're a lot more consistent with their calls and everything like that. But um, as far as like the energy and how we're gonna come out, we're gonna come out with the same attitude as we did last week. We wanna try to keep them off the board and maybe not even give them three. Some say that's the top offense in the country, but I think we go against the top offense in the country every day in practice. But this, week's a this week of practice, the practice is going to be a lot more competitive and we're going to try to get under our offensive skin just because they say that Morningside's offense is better than ours. And I know those guys are not going, not going to accept that. So hopefully they come out hot and if the defense comes out hot, it'll be a great day. A great day indeed. Morningside is ranked number three and coming off a 52-7 win over St. Xavier, holding the Chicago Cougars to just 209 total yards and the Mustangs recorded a school record nine sacks. So they handled St. X virtually the same way St. Francis did. Well, I've known their coach, Steve Ryan, for a number of years. He's a great football coach. He's a great person, does, has done a super job at Morningside. Uh, I think the first time we played was about 2004, through three or four in that, in that area. And, uh, you know, I can't say enough good things about him. A lot of respect for him. We're not going to like each other for several hours on Saturday afternoon, but I think there's mutual respect. And uh, it, it'll be a, a great college football game with, uh, obviously, when you get to the Final Four, you, you've got great teams. Great teams with great players. Morningside QB Trent Salzma ranks number one in the country in pass efficiency with a 194 rating. 
USF's Nick Ferrer ranks number three at 174. Mustang running back Bubba Jenkins pretty much goes one and two with Cougar running back Justin Green in every category you want your running back showing up in. Well, again, I think they're the two best tailbacks in the country. Jay Green has just had a uh, fantastic season. Um, and so has their, their tailback. Uh, and I'm sure they'll both be uh, on par again Saturday. So this is a great football game to come see. Uh, I say two of the nation's best, if not the best. So get to Final Four, man. It's time to buckle up and see who's going to go the distance. Starting all the games last year, then not being able to start the one that I wanted to get to, uh, it, it really definitely brought a lot of motivation to me this year since game one. Uh, the, the goal has always been to get back to Daytona, you know, not rather win this game, win this game. It, the goal has always been to get back to Daytona where we were last year. And I'm really just putting everything forth that I can so I can start in, Day in Daytona after we win this game. And um, being a senior, it, it's really just, like I said, my time is ticking. So, I only have a couple games left and I just want to make the most of it. That's actually a good one. Just good job. It is game time for the winningest college football program in the state of Indiana. It's the University of St. Francis Cougars on Redeemer Radio. Now, live to the stadium with the voice of the Cougars, Joe Parson and the Redeemer Radio sports team. Darcy Stadium, along with Sean McBride, I'm Joe Parson. Thought we might be getting our national anthem. Well, remember, it was one year ago that uh, many felt that Morningside St. Francis playoff matchup was effectively for the national championship. 
Well, that may be true once again here today. Last season, the Mustangs spoke first, scoring the game's first 20 points in an early lead. But the Cougars would speak next, scoring 42 of the game's next 49 points in a seven-point USF victory, propelling them to the eventual NEIA football championship. Today, the stage is set once again between these two football NEIA powerhouses. Morningside comes to Fort Wayne where they've never won in three previous trips to the Summit City, but the Mustangs stayed unbeaten, clobbering St. Xavier 52-7 at home last Saturday afternoon. Mustangs actually trailed SXU 7-3 early on, but then scored 49 unanswered points, led by junior quarterback Trent Salzma, who threw for 335 yards and four touchdowns. But the Morningside defense, Sean, also had a big impact with nine sacks, get that nine sacks, and holding SXU to negative of seven rushing yards as well. And they've got 39 on the season, Joe. This is a powerhouse football team, and it really starts with their defense. They are crushing, and Nick Ferrer and company are really going to have their hands full today against this Mustang defense. Here at Darcy Stadium, St. Francis faced another GPAC team in Northwestern College of Iowa. It was a game where the Cougar defense led the way, holding the Red Raiders without a touchdown being scored in the 30-3 victory. And that effort, fueled by three interceptions, three sacks, and holding Northwestern to just 57 yards. Remember, this was a Raider team that was coming in averaging 230 a game on the ground. And the defense key last week, it'll be a key again here today. Yeah, again, Joe, consensus around the area is that the last week's defensive performance was the best of the year so far, and they're going to need a carbon copy effort of that today. Cougars Mustangs, number one against number three here today in Fort Wayne. Winner earns the trip to Daytona Beach, Florida in two weeks to play for the NEIA title. We'll take a timeout, then return for a visit with Cougar coach Kevin Downey. This is Cougar Playoff Football on Redeemer Radio, WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. The season is officially underway as the Black Friday... This was a high-scoring offense, four turnovers on the day, including three interceptions. And it just seemed like your offense feeded, fed off that. Uh, a great job by the defense, would you agree? Yeah, I thought we were very dominant on the defense. Uh, Stan Jackson, uh, you know, really has it, been in a rotating role, but uh, he's Mr. Excitement. He got some electricity from the defense and led uh, to the whole team. This is a game about enthusiasm, and uh, I don't know what it is about this group of kids you got defensively, but uh, it, as we've been said before, it, it's just like it's contagious, and when they're doing well, boy, the offense feeds off of that, and uh, two of the turnovers, I think, we turned into points on the board, and that's just huge for your team. Ladies and well, gentlemen, welcome to Mr. John Stadium in Fort Wayne, Indiana. For the Madden Association, the Athletic Football Championship Series semi final Set up Let's talk about uh, team number two from the Jeep Bank coming in here today. Uh, some old, not, not so uh, unfamiliar strangers coming in. Morningside last year, remember they got off to a 20 and nothing lead. They came back and uh, won it by seven points. And he was determined by the number of You thought that this was maybe the best team in the year. Nothing really changes this year when they come back. Uh, cast of characters are largely the same, led by a very fine young quarterback. 
They're not standing. Two best teams. They have not been behind the entire season. They had a 35 Seven, Josh Brown. Number eight, Jimmy Johnson. Number nine, Jesse Faulty. Number ten, Elvis Jenkins. Eleven, Jerry Meyer. Twelve, Addison Ross. Thirteen, Anthony Sims. Fifteen, Jake Mulford. Sixteen, Trent Solsma. Seventeen, Dion Claybar. Nineteen, Clayton Nordin. Twenty, Logan Rosebaum. Number 22, Chase Nelson. Number 24, Taylor Mike. Number 27, Taylor Winger. So the, you know, they've got Number 29, uh, Drew Lover. Number 30, Kyle Johnson. Number 37, Jared Amundsen. Defense. Uh, Number 38, Jacob Harvey. Strong, you know, I think their strength Number 39, Joel Katzer. Number 41, Austin Lentz. Tailback. 43, Nate Cole. 44, Riley Richling. 45, Sam Aiken. 46, Jason Halibut. 47, Anthony Sola. The points of emphasis you've told your team. What, what does St. Francis have to do to win this game? Right, you know, anytime you're in a big game, it's about this. 55, Chase Reed. Number 56, Sawyer Storr. 57, Jacob Gatzer. Number 58, Garrett Stanley. Number 59, Ethan Farenthold. 63, Trey Bradburn. 64, Alex Harrison. 65, Otto Ducat. 66, Nathan Neeson. Number 70, Garrett Penny. Number 72, Taylor Duncan. 74, Andrew Metzger. 75, Nicholas Loya. Head coach Kevin Donnelly in his 20th year, the first and only coach the Cougars have had in their football program, ranked number one. And 12 and 0 coming in, 6 and 0 of course this year in the Mid East League. Uh, the Cougars a year ago won their final nine games, including a 38-17 championship victory against Baker in the national championship game. Morningside College, uh, coached by Steve Ryan, longtime coach as well in his 16th year. They are 13 and 0, ranked number three coming in, uh, 8 and 0 in the GPAC this year. And all, what catches your eye also 7 and 0 on the road. A year ago they were 10 and 2. Both losses coming on the road, including the 42-35 quarterfinal loss to St. Francis here. In the we will be back. We'll get ready for Sean Bryan down in the field. He'll be joining our referee today. His name is Mike Patton. Point toss coming up. And this semifinal matchup for the rank to play for the National NEIA Championship. This is Cougar Football and Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Dear, do you have any cash? I owe Heather for lunch. Oh, and we need to send Jason money for textbooks. Sound familiar? Now there's an easier way to pay with People Pay from First Federal Bank. It uses First Federal's mobile app to quickly and securely text or email cash and e-gift cards. Oh, I still have to get a gift card for Dan's birthday. I think there's an ATM on the way. Stop hunting for ATMs and start using People Pay. Check it out at first-fed.com slash People Pay. Member FDIC. Hi, this is Charlie Momper from Momper Insulation. After last winter's brutal temperatures and record-breaking wind chills, it's not too early to start thinking about adding insulation to your attic, side walls, and crawl space. By adding additional insulation, you can cut your energy costs up to 30%. Call Momper Insulation today at 432-7543. Momper, the number one name in insulation since 1956.
in Southern Oregon. They are undefeated the Raiders of 12 and all. They're at the Reinhardt Eagles down in Georgia. Reinhardt at 11 0 today. A couple of games of note in that uh, semifinal matchup. The Raiders beat Carroll back uh, during the regular season 35 14. And of course, uh, the Eagles, they knocked out a mid state team a couple of weeks ago at Concordia, Michigan. And all trying to get down to Daytona Beach. 89, Brock Riley. Number 90, Blake Blaker. Number 93, Jordan May. Number 94, Matt Ford. Number 96, Ahmad Rucker. Number 97, James Jamison. Number 98, Eric Kelmogar. The Cougars are coached by Mr. Kevin Donnelly. Sean McBride is down there. Mike Patton, our referee. Thank you, thank you. All right, first off, congratulations. Two great programs. Uh, it's our pleasure to be here today. I'm Mike Patton, your referee. Mike Murphy, your umpire. This is the coin I'm going to use today. Clearly marked, heads and tails. Morning sign is the visiting team. What's your call? Heads. The call is heads. It's tail. We'd like to receive. Okay, which way are you going to kick? Uh, we'll defend the building. Okay, so kick that way. Back over there. Joe, from down here on the field, once again, University of St. Francis has won the coin toss. That's three in a row here in the postseason. They have elected to receive the ball. And uh, it looks like Morningside will be defending the north goal. Beautiful day out here, Joe. The wind will not be a factor today. So uh, interesting update there. And uh, let's play some football. Great job, Sean. We'll see you back upstairs and let it get underway here. The battle for the right to play for the national championship. This is Cougar Football on Redeemer Radio at 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Do you have a devotion to Lady Guadalupe? Travel with Redeemer Radio Odysseys to Mexico City and see firsthand the tilma of Juan Diego bearing the image of the Holy Virgin Mary. Register by February 28th to save $100 on your trip. To find more information about our Mexico Odyssey, visit Redeemer Radio Odysseys on our website at RedeemerRadio.com or call me, Tina Schneider, at 260-436-2482. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. As we gather in your name, O Lord, there are so many things for which we are grateful, for you have created us in your image and likeness, and you have filled us with gifts and talents and abilities. We thank you for the gifts that you have bestowed upon these athletes, their coaches, their parents, and their supporters. We ask you to bless this contest in which we show forth the beauty of creation by using our talents wisely. Help us always to use them for your greater honor and glory in a spirit of fairness and competition so that this game may truly be a way of bringing to the world an awareness of you who are Lord forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Strap in and turn up the radio for hard-hitting, high-scoring USF Cougar football. Coach Kevin Donnelly joins Joe Parson and the Redeemer Radio sports team for one of the great traditions at Fort Wayne sports as we count down to the kickoff on Redeemer Radio. It is Morningside ready to kick the ball away. Cougars won the toss, want the ball. Green calls for it. He's back at the four-yard line. Straight ahead, across the 10-15. 
cuts to his right, turns the corner, 20, 25, gets to the outside, and runs out of bounds across the 30-yard line, up across the 35, maybe to the 36. And a good return by Justin Green, who came in averaging 34.4 yards, a kickoff return. That effectively number one in the nation, also with a couple of kickoff return touchdowns along of 96. And we are ready to get this one underway. Cougars bring their offensive unit out, moving from right to left as we look at it. Out of the south end zone. An offensive line that averaged 270 a man, tackle to tackle, Connor Holcomb at center. Austin Smoger, Jalen Gamble, the guards, Alex Woods, Nick Shoemaker are the tackles. Shotgun formation. Here is Ferrer, one to throw, loads up, throws the right side ball down deep. That's incomplete. Pretty good coverage down there. Tended for Rixey. Had a big uh, covered guy on him that time. I believe that was Xavier Spann at 6-1. Uh, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the interesting thing here, Joe. When you look at the cornerbacks here from Morningside, there's a clear disparity between Span 6-1 and Ricky Johnson, number 8, the other corner. He checks in at 5-9. And that time they went after the, uh, the tall corner, and he was right there. Second down and 10. Cougars working right to left as we look at it from the right side hash mark. One snap into the books. Now here is Ferrer out of the pistol. Looks to hand to Green. And Justin Green stutter stops, moves to his right, only gets about couple two three yards that'll bring up third down and long it'll be a third down and long seven call coming up when we talk about this morning side defense obviously chase reese number 55 defensive lineman and their middle linebacker caden mcdonald we should be hearing from those guys all afternoon they put up some big numbers here on defense cougars were seven of 17 last week against northwestern on the third down situations for 41 percent trying to reach their own 46 here it is Ferrer, looks, screens the ball near side. Here's a run to the 40-yard line, and it, it won't be enough as Green is bumped out of bounds around the 42. That's going to leave them about five yards short. So it'll be three and out for the Cougars offensively to start this ball game, and we'll see Joe Nepper to come on to punt the ball away. And this is where we're going to need to see a great punt by Nepper and a good hold by the special teams here. They've done very well so far. Let's see if they can pit, more, uh, pit Morningside back deep here. Last week, Nepper had four punts, a long of 67. He averaged just under 46 yards of punt. He'd like to get another good start. Low snap, picks it up, and nice sailing kick. And they'll just let that one bounce. It takes a bounce inside the five. It's not going to get into the end zone. It'll be down inside the three-yard line. So, Nepper, what a job. Beautiful job. That is exactly what they uh – that's what you script, Joe. And boy, oh boy, the uh, special teams by University of St. Francis did their job. Now let's see what they can do here on defense. One of the questions we had, Jordan May got to tripped up a little bit last week. He comes out wearing his normal number 99 in the blue uniforms. He's back out there. So that's good news for St. Francis. Of course, joined by Eric Hemelgarn and James Jamisich. Yeah, they're down three defensive front three for the Cougars. Offensive line for the Mustangs average 274 a man, tackle to tackle. About five yards deep in the end zone. Trent Solsmuth, fine junior quarterback, waiting for his first chance. Looks, play action fake. He wants to throw out of the end zone. Has a lot of time, throws over the middle, nobody home. That time looking down the middle. And interesting, Tanner Verstag was looking for a flag, but that ball, it was nowhere near him. Nowhere near him, and a very interesting call. Both teams on first down. Trying to go over the top of the defense here, and uh, both incomplete passes. So, very risky move there, throwing from your own end zone. First tag had two catches last week against SXU for 59 yards, including a touchdown. Now they want to run the ball to middle with Bubba Jenkins, the guy that came from nowhere out of Southwest, Southwestern State University. I should say Southwest Baptist University. And it, how about this, these numbers, Sean? Over 2,000 rushing yards, that's number one in all of NAIA rushing. Oh, that's insane. And when you think about that, what does that tell you? He's got a great offensive line to run behind. Now it'll be third down and long. Bunch line up to the right side for Salsma out of the gun. Cougar show blitz defensive right side. It's coming. And here's a throw over the middle, and that ball is caught for a first down across the middle up to the 25-yard line. Wow. What a throw that time by that junior quarterback, Jenkins. All right, check that, Salsma threw it on a frozen rope line right through the middle into traffic, and a great reception that time. They moved the chains. That was Reed Jorgensmeyer, 6'3", freshman down the middle. Now the look and the play action throw to the right, and that's a wide throw that was nearly intercepted. 
Colmer had the cover that time right side, but Addison Ross coming out of the backfield, the intended receiver, no good. Yeah, they flooded that zone on the right side. Two receivers over there looking to create some confusion with the DBs, and they weren't having anything of a Wil Wilmer Cole right there in coverage. Second down and 10, empty backfield now, three wide to the left for the Mustangs, two wide to the right. Solsmith looking, now has got the snap, looks quick delivery, left side, that was a deflected ball, incomplete again. Hung in the air tantalizingly, but uh, no good. It'll bring up a long uh, third down call now. Good man coverage out there. Marcus stepped from his linebacker position, was right there at the point of attack and, uh, and helped separate the receiver from the ball. And another incomplete pass. That's a uh, big down right here, Joe. Garrett Shanley at center today. Alex Harris and Andrew Metzger, the guards. Trey Bradburn and Garrett Temme, the tackles. They average 274 a man for the Mustang. Same set, empty backfield. Giving ground, here's Solzman, steps up, rolls to his right, looking, looking, looking. He's going to get rid of the ball late. That ball is jungled, but it's ruled no catch. And Mustangs did pick up a first down, but now they'll have to punt the ball away. Defenses emerging, standing tall early for both teams. Well, <laughs> and there was Pearson Harnish on pursuit that time from his linebacker position as well, Eric Dutton that welcomed that quarterback, uh, Trent Solzman, into Darcy Stadium, took a big shot as, he, as soon as he got rid of that ball. Cougars' last couple of ball games have been having two back in punt return. Now they've got just Sean Boswell back there, waits at his, just uh, outside his own 35. Spencer Wyatt uh, does the punting, oh. and there's a ball coming off the side of his foot, and the Cougars will have it in. Morningside territory at about the 46-yard line. Wow, terrible punt. Good fortune for the USF Cougars right there. A short field coming up. Looks like they're going to mark this one at the 45 of Morningside. And uh, so that one first down that the uh, USF defense gave up, really not that big of a deal. And, Sean, this uh, kid, uh, Spencer White, he's got a big leg. Four punts last week, had a long of 54. He's averaging 45.8 last week and just under 48 yards a punt for the season about the Cougars on the short kick get it at the 45 of the Mustangs moving from right to left and here's Ferrer long count of the line of scrimmage now looks screens the ball right side catches made Boswell needs a block got the uh, yardage down inside the 40 to about the 37 that's uh, the longest play from scrimmage Gained by USF early in this ball game. It'll bring up second down and short. Yeah, nice little safe uh, screen pass out to the right side. Boswell did pick up that block, gain of eight. So again, nice conservative play call, but effective. Brings up second and two. You can do a lot here. Rixey lines up wide to the short side to the right, two wide to the left. On second down, Barrera now with green. Look, starts right side, curls up the middle. First down, steps out of a tackle. Cuts to the 25, brought down. Gaines yards down inside the 33, close to the 22-yard line, and he's got a first down for St. Francis. And Green is going to need to do that all afternoon long. He makes people miss, and he has a, a real good job of that vision downfield to get those extra yards, and now they're knocking on the door just outside the red zone here at the 23. Green with 168 points so far this season, ranks third among all NAI football scores this season. First and ten from the right side hash mark. Ferrer looks, steps up in the pocket, throws a bullet. He's got Gagner for a touchdown. 23 yards. And Gagner, nobody near him, and you'd love to see that, Sean. The big fella coming through right there. He just stopped, waited for the ball. Ferrer put it right there, right in his bread basket. He turned around, and there was nobody on him. So a blown coverage, and Gagner sniffed the end zone out. Great strike that time by the Cougars. For Nick Ferrer, that is his 33rd touchdown pass of the year. Gagner, that is his first touchdown catch this year. How about that? Great timing for it. Now, Gardner on low snap. Kick is on the way, end over end, and it is good. 7-0, the number one ranked USF Cougars getting off to a good start in their second possession of the ballgame. 7-0 with a timeout. Cougar football on Redeemer Radio. WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana.
Make a difference in your life and others by joining. Every great team has focus and talent. And at Parkview Sports Medicine, our focus is on you. From performance training and nutrition counseling to orthopedic surgery, athletic rehab, and more, Parkview Sports Medicine's got you covered. You can trust us to bring together today's top experts in sports medicine to improve the performance and treatment of athletes like you. Go to parkview.com slash sports medicine to learn how we can help you and the athletes in your life be your best. Parkview Sports Medicine, upgrade your game. Sean McBride, I'm Joe Parson back at Darcy Stadium. Very impressive drive by the Cougars operating with a short field from the 45. Kevin Downey really made the point, emphasized Sean resiliency. You're going to have good things happen. You're going to have bad things happen. You've got to be able to respond from both. Well, and how about that uh, Cougar defense right there? Really, it started with Nepper's punt, hitting them back deep. They allowed one first down, and then uh, Morningside shanked it. Short field for the offense, and they capitalized. That is precisely what the Cougars need to do all day. Chad Berg and Connor Niles back deep. Berg back pedaling. He's got it at the three. Works to his left. Across the 10-15, looking for a seam. And stacked up, he steps out of one tackle across the 25. And Brings it out to about, well, let's see where they're going to mark that ball. It'll be first and town, the 10 for the Mustangs, trailing at 7 to nothing. Kevin Downey said they have not trailed for one minute in any ball game, and I hate to correct the coach because <laughs> well, you, you do put, run some risk there, but actually they did trail St. Xavier last week 7 to 3, but then it was all Mustangs as they scored. Well, they won 52 to 7, if that tells you something. 49 in a row, that's powerful right there. First and 10, Solzman out of the pistol lineman now. They reset to the fullback as will give to Bubba Jenkins, and he's wrapped up and dropped for a loss inside the 25. Is that Jameson? The textbook right there, Joe. Uh, it could be, uh, I think it was 93. Yeah, 93 right there, DN position. That's Jordan May, I believe, Jordan wearing 93 May. instead of 99. He did a great job getting rid of his blocker, and he was right there for the running back. They keep changing Jordan's number on me. <laughs> <laughs> now they're going to reflop, or reposition the tight end off the left side. And uh, here is Sulzman now after a loss, second down 11. Looks, play action fake, and he's being rushed. Had to get rid of the ball, and nice defense knocked it away from Connor Niles, and that was Wilmer Cole. Cole doing a great job, but look at that. Hemmelgaard was able to destroy that offensive line, was right in Sulzman's grill as he was getting rid of that ball. And so it might have been off target, but Cole was right there too. This defense has shown up early today. Sulzman is thrown for 52 touchdowns this year. That's number one. 4,000 yards coming in, that's number two. Third down and 11. Cougars trying to force a three and out. Here's Solzman, gives ground, rolls to his left, buying time, he's got time, throws down. He's got a wide open man downfield, and he missed him. Inside the Cougar, 30, that would have been seven, and that was Tanner Verstag. Verstag has some wheels. How did he outrun that coverage? The play took a long time to develop, Joe, as Salzman was flushed out of the pocket that time, rolling to the left side, and he just gave everything he possibly had into that ball. And who was open? Tanner Verstag right there, but the ball was just overthrown. Verstag, one of those few returning uh, skill position players. He had three catches last year and 67 yards. High snap. Here's a kick and nearly blocked. But it goes off the left side, got some distance. It's at the 42, takes a Cougar, bounce up the midfield. And once again, USF will have very good field position, leading it with 10-25 remaining in this opening quarter, 7-0 against Morningside. You know, again, what we see, some ham and eggs here, Joe. Again, the uh, stout USF defense doing their job really to perfection at this time, taking Solsma out of his game and giving Nick Ferrer and company a short field once again. And uh, this offense, again, getting a gift here uh, in the early part of December with uh, first and 10 from their own 50-yard line. Gegner comes back in. He's off the wing to the right side. Caught the touchdown pass, 23 yards, to give St. Francis the early lead. Morningside back in uh, cover two defensively. Ferrer, a lot of time, checking off. Now throws down deep. He's got Rocky James all over inside the 20. There's a penalty flag. He will score, but let's see what that's going to be about. It would be a 50-yard touchdown if it stands up at the 10-16 mark. This flag came, I believe, from the side judge who was back deep looking at that coverage back there. So let's see what happens. It's As coming back. It is coming back. So that may be offensive pass interference. Mike Patton, a referee. He'll let us know momentarily. 
Pass interference. Offense number six. 15 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, I guess that's how Rocky got so wide open. Yeah, I guess so. He must have created separation with his hands uh, because he was. Joe, there was a bubble around him a good two or three yards, and Ferrer was able to find him, but this one is coming back. And that's a big loss. It'll move the ball back to the Cougar 35-yard line. So instead of being 13-0 USF, it will be first down and 25 from the USF 35-yard line. Yeah, and, and in these type of games here, you've got to absolutely positively play the cleanest game possible. That was a big one. Takes away a score and 15 points. So Ferrer now looks to throw again. Looks near side. Pump fake. Now throws down. Looking for James again. Trying to find it. And just over shot that time by Ferrer. Just off uh, Rocky James outstretched hands. Incomplete. They'll bring up second down and still 25. Well, I like the play call here. Again, what they saw on that previous play, uh, James does have the ability to wheel out there and get open in space. So they go right back to him. They've got a lot of yards to make up here. And uh, so I like going over the top on that call. Steven uh, Evans had the coverage that time. He's also a freshman and a, kind of a little guy at 5'9". So Cougars knowing what they want the, as far as matchups, trying to exploit. 7 nothing lead, but second down and long. Here's Ferrer looking to throw the out pattern. He's got to catch Boswell. Turns 40-45. Up uh, close to midfield. Stepped out of bounds at the USF 49. And that will bring up a little bit more manageable third down call, third and 11 at the USF 49. Yeah, gain of 14 by Boswell right there. Great pass by Ferrer, thrown to the outside so the defender didn't have an opportunity to get it. And right after the catch, Boswell was able to turn and get upfield. Cougars make a late change now. Gengner comes out. Duke Blackwell checks in, brings the play in. St. Francis trying to get to the Morningside 40-yard line on this snap. In too deep in coverage for the Mustangs. They have four defensive linemen down. Here is Ferrer looking, looking, dances, throws over the middle, and there's a catch made at the 35. That's Boswell inside the 30, down to the 27-yard. And that's good Blackwell checking 10 rather than 19, and first and 10, the Cougars on the move again. Again, Blackwell doing a great job dragging across the middle. The defender was behind him. Ferrer put it right on the money, and Blackwell did a fine job. Did you see that, Joe? He had two hands around that ball going across the middle. And uh, so, again, a great job. Good fundamentals on this play there. Nate Carson checks in. He's wide to the right side. Blackwell just caught that pass. He's uh, up in the slot to the right side. Christman comes in now at six foot five, wide to the left. From the left side, hash mark. Cougars run, and Justin Green plunges straight ahead inside the 25. Got another yard down to the 24-yard line. That's a gain of about five. And again, with Green's running, the linebackers have to suck in there. So they, uh, again, USF really keeping this defense guessing right now. They're being effective, throwing the ball. But again, you've got to keep your eye on Justin Green because he can gash you inside, outside, turn on a dime, and he is very dangerous. It'll be a gain of four, second down and six. A year ago, Green gashed Morningside, 25 carries for 296 yards. Tries to sweep to the right side, has some running room, steps out of a tackle, steps out of another, inside the 10, and still on his feet. Or did he step out of bounds? They blow the whistle. But I tell you what, that reminded me so much of a run we saw last year at Reinhardt when I thought he was down. He wasn't. He wasn't. That's right. He was so close. Tiptoeing and dancing around that sideline. He must have caught a heel on the far side of the field down at the 10. But look at this. They're back inside the red zone. Remember, this was a game a year ago. Morningside had the early 20 to nothing lead. So it is a 60-minute game, regardless what happens on this possession. Carson stays in wide to the left. Gegner back in up on the wing to the left side. I am bet you they're going to give him a little more attention now. First and goal from the 10. Motion right to left. And here's a counter run by Green. Green trying to get to the goal line and stopped inside the two. Down at the one goes Justin Green. He shaded a little bit left right there. I think maybe if he would have just planted and stepped back right, he'd be in the end zone right now. But still a tremendous run that time. And they're just getting ready to punch this ball in. Gegner checks out. Now Chris Smith comes in for the first time today. It'll be second and goal. And they're going to spot that ball at the two. Under center now, Ferrer looks to Green again, off tackle, bounces up, now reverses back to the left side and needs, and he's brought down with a shoestring tackle back around the four or five yard line. Uh, hats off to the Morningside defense. He literally ran into a wall there and bounced off of it. Tried to make something happen by going to the left side, but the pursuit was there. 
and uh, tackle for loss now for Morningside. Ironically, he had Nick Ferrer kind of trailing on the play that right. flashed through my mind. Well, maybe you should let her all the ball. Then again, that's your quarterback. No, no. no I don't think you want to do that. Take the loss. <laughs> Sean Boswell back in. He sets up on the right side, on the wing, actually. Rixie's wide to the right. They've got man coverage on him. Third down and goal from outside the three. And here's a run by, no, it's a play action fake, and Ferreira reverses back to left, and then is buried back outside the 15 at the 16. Again, a play action. The uh, the second man threw was Sonata. He was actually running into the end zone. I thought for sure he had the ball, but Ferreira, yeah, he was trying to throw, and he got blown up. That's a first sack on the day. So now with the ball resting at the 16, decision for Coach Donnelly. Do you try for the field goal in three? They're going to go for six. Try to get into the end zone. 6-16 remaining in the opening quarter. Cougars have been impressive, leading at 7-0, trying to expand to that lead. Ferrer, quick snap, looks, looks, dances, throws to the right. That one, a diving attempt. Up. He's got a touchdown. What a play. Oh, my. Touchdown. I think that's Boswell. I think it is Boswell. That one on fourth down for 16 yards, a pass, Sean. Boswell was not even in the picture. There was a defender for Morningside, and Boswell never left his eyes off the ball, dove for it, and kept it off the turf. Touchdown, USF. Wow. Boy, oh boy, what a throw there. It went low. He had to scrape it off that turf, rolls over, and he's got the ball in the breadbasket. The call stands, and another six points on the board for the Cougars. And, Sean, that's where you've got to have communication between passer and receiver because that one had to know what Boswell was going to try to do. He just left it low and well off of him, and Sean dove for the ball and caught it off the turf. Now they're going to go for two. On a 13-0 lead, Ferrer looks, throws to the left. That ball is incomplete. Nobody home that time. Might have been tipped, Joe. That did not look like a Nick Ferrer pass. So, again, an incomplete pass, but still a touchdown. Interesting decision to go for two, but we have a timeout here at Darcy Stadium, 6-0-6, and the Cougar offense today. They have stepped up in this early part of this ballgame. 13-0 Cougars will be back. This is Cougar Football on Redeemer Radio. WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. You can help support your Catholic parish or school with Notre Dame Federal Credit Union's Elevate program. You'll not only enjoy excellent personal service and save money with your new loan or credit card, you'll also be giving money back to the participating parish or school you care about. Let Notre Dame Federal Credit Union elevate all participating parishes or schools. Elevate can be reached at 844-230-6611 or visit us online at ndelevate.com. Independent from the university. Football fans, h &L Electric is your full-service electrical contractor. From commercial and industrial to residential, h &L Electric can handle the smallest to the largest of projects for your business or residence. Call Pete Henry at h &L Electric. Cougars have exploded out to an early impressive lead over the number three ranked Mustangs at 13 to nothing. Now Joe, look, go Joe, ahead, Chuck. I'm sorry, we, we talk about this, this morning side team uh, here, and again, they come in with these massive numbers, and again, very early in the game, so we're not discounting them at all. But when you look at the strength of schedule, okay, they come in 13 and 0. They played five teams during the regular season that had winning records uh, by the end of the season. So uh, keep that in mind. You know, we've got a new kicker out there, and I wonder if Gar Gavin Gardner was hurt. This is a deep kick, though, and driving Bird back inside the 10. Works to the middle of the field, working to his right side across the 15. He won't get to the 20. Good downfield coverage that time. I believe that was Malachi Mannion yep. down there. And it'll be first and 10 for the Mustangs, working now from left to right. Yeah, so Mannion did a fine job there in open field. Even had a blocker there, but was able to shake him off and make a nice stick. Uh, and uh, really stop that run. You know, if Gavin Gardner was injured at some point, somewhere, somehow, that would explain why he was not out there for that, uh, basically, what is a usual try for an extra point. But it will Trent Charles Salsman now down 13 nothing here on the road, and that's a first this year for this Mustang team. Too wide to the left side, in motion. They'll hand the ball a sweep coming to the right, and uh, here is Bubba Jenkins. Fights his way across the 20 up to about the 21, 22-yard line. 
Pearson Harnish, one of those that strung it out. Eric Dunton as well. And he didn't make the tackle, but he did make the play. Number 97, James Jamisich, did a fine job taking a good angle out there, getting a paw on the uh, running back and uh, allowing the stop. Gain of two. And here is Jenkins got some running room steps out. A tackle is across the 30 and he's got a first down. First and 10 to the Morningside 34-yard line with a quick burst of speed. And that time, unfortunately, Jamison's got too far upfield that time and the handoff was right to his hole. So he had to come back and try and pursue the runner. Hurry up offense for Morningside now. Solzman looks, wants to throw, screens the ball near side. And that boy, that should have been pass interference. Yep. As the catch is made by Connor Niles, and he rumbles quickly upfield to his own 45. And they are right at the first down stick. Let's see how they're going to rule it. I think they're going to give it to him here, Joe. Cougars with Jamison getting up slowly, but looks like he's going to stay in there be okay. Up tempo here. But here come the Mustangs now. Up tempo offense now. The flip flop, the tight end. That's Addison Rost on the wing to the left side. Motion by Berg, right to left behind the line of scrimmage. Solzman looks, hands to Jenkins. This time, Cougars are waiting for him at the pass. Hey, there was Jamison. Hey, are we talking about him? He's having a game. And uh, that time he got into the backfield, was almost there at the mesh point, but he just came in and clobbered that running back. Tackle for loss for Jamison, number 97. Jamison uh, leads the Cougars with five sacks. He also leads in with eight quarterback hurries. Loss brings up second down, and let's call it 12. Addison Ross on the wing to the right side. Play action fake Solzman over the middle. Tip ball incomplete. Somebody got it right at the line of scrimmage and it'll bring up third down and long. Yeah, it looks like uh, Pearson Harnish was able to get a big paw up there and knock it down. So an incomplete pass. And now, after the tackle for loss from Jamison and the incomplete pass, Morningside's hurting again. It comes up third and 12. Trying to reach the USF 45 yard line on this snap. Trailing at 13 to nothing. Two wide spread offense either side of the field now. Shotgun formation, Solzman. Now they've got motion right to left by Edson Ross. That's back to the wide side to the left. Here's Solzman, play action fake, wants to throw again. Has a lot of time, throws down the middle. He's got a man down there and there's a diving catch inside the Cougar 20 to 15. And boy, take your pick, they had two open wide receivers. Yeah, blown coverage that time by the secondary for the Cougars that time as uh, Verstag was really just wide open and uh, just had to fall under the ball and catch it. And now they're inside the red zone. Hurry up offense again. Solzma looks to Jenkins, cuts to its left, fights his way down close to the 15. They may say the knee hit back around the 16. Jenkins last week against SXU had 27 carries, 183 yards, one touchdown. That was a big conversion on that last play there, Joe. Boy, Hope to tell boy. you. Now it's second down and eight. Clock moves inside of four minutes. 13-0 Cougars. Morningside on a drive. Motion right to left. Behind the line of scrimmage. Solsma out of the pistol. Waits. Looks. Option run. Hands the ball off. And they go to Jenkins. Lucky to get back to the 15. Very impressed with the front line here for USF Cougar defense. They are doing a great job shedding their blockers and getting into the backfield. It can be dangerous, though, when you are uh, pursuing that heavy for the uh, for the screen or the, uh, you know, the... Uh uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. It's draws. Early. Yeah, for the draws. There yeah. you go. I'll try to help you. <laughs> you. You didn't know where I was going. It's okay. Third and seven. <laughs> Shotgun formation. Solzman again. Motion left to right. Drops to throw. Looks. Look has time. Screens the ball. And a left-handed catch attempt. No good. Crossing attempt uh, that time by Chad Berg. Working from left to right. Now it's fourth down. And it looks like they're going to try to bring in the field goal team. Interesting, Sean. They've attempted only three field goals this year. They are two out of three. One of those came last week on a 35-yard conversion. And he's working off the left hash mark here, and it looks to be a, a right-footed kicker. So this isn't a gimme at all. This will be a 33-yard attempt from the left side hash mark. And this is uh, Jared Amundsen with the kick that is long enough on the way and good. Ah. So 33 yards Field goal on the at the three-minute mark in Morningside on the board. They trail it 13 to 3. We'll step out for a timeout. This is Cougar Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Hey, it's Kyle from the Kyle Hyman Show. Heard weekdays from 7 to 8 a.m. here on Redeemer Radio. And every morning we meet you where you are, getting out of bed, drinking your coffee, on your way to work, and 
through prayer, guests, personal stories, sometimes games. We bring you Catholicism with joy and fun to start your day. So don't miss the Kyle Hyman Show weekdays from 7 to 8 a.m. right here on Redeemer Radio. So the Mustangs get on the board on that 33-yard field goal, so it's 13-3. to And the Cougars now still moving right to left with three minutes remaining in this opening quarter. Got to be alert. And basically, what is a championship matchup, if you will, any kind of trickery. Cougars have got, uh, let's see, eight men up within about uh, 10, 15 yards of line of scrimmage. Try to be alert for a pooch kick because they now spread out Morningside ready to kick the ball away from left to right. Get the go ahead. Here comes the approach now. It is long and deep. And Green lets that one go. And uh, did it hit inbounds? I believe it did. Into the end. No, it's a penalty flag thrown. So USF will have it first and 10 at their own 35. That was close. That was a big call right there. Now the official was right there and saw it happen. It looked like on the bounce it might have left over the pylon. But the official says, no, 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 it went out of bounds instead of into the end zone. So now the uh, USF Cougars catch a good break right there, getting it in much better position. That's a difference between having the ball at the one yep. or having it at the 35. Yes. So the Cougars bring their offensive unit out on the field once again. Nick Ferrer with a couple of scoring tosses, one to Zach Gagner, and then the other one to Sean Boswell on a fine diving catch and backside of the end zone. Now the Cougars start from the right side hash mark, motion by Boswell, right to left behind the line of scrimmage. Here's the counter run. There's Green looking for running room and brings it across the 35, gets a couple of yards up to about the 37. Again, the uh, USF defense right here, they were have that bend, don't break attitude, and that was a huge third down conversion on the last series by Morningside. But if they can hold Morningside to field goals all day, this will be a great thing. Pick up a couple for Justin Green. He had 30 carries last week for 181 yards, scored a rushing touchdown. Second down and a, well, let's call it a short seven. Here's Ferrer from the right side hash mark. Looks to Green again. Running room up the middle. He's got behind the defense. 45 40. 35 30. Cuts to the outside. Inside the 20 yard line. Running out of steam and oh. get out of bounds. And there's a penalty flag. Yep. And it'll be extra yardage. It'll be half the distance to the goal for St. Francis. First and goal. Well called. I believe that's going to be an unsportsmanlike or in a uh, roughing penalty right there as he was trotting out of bounds and took a shot. Landed about seven yards outside of the playing field right there. But what a tremendous job interiorly. And Sean Boswell kept his block in the open field for about 40 yards and gave uh, Green an additional 10 to 12 yards. That's about a 55-yard run plus. Oh, wait. They call in that the other way? They are saying that that is against University of St. Francis and specifically Dan Rixey. You've got to be kidding me. Oh, my. Well, that'll take the ball back to the 25-yard line of Morningside, but what a turnabout on a call that we thought for sure was going to take the ball inside the 10-yard line first and goal. Wow, I'm stunned by that. Goes As back to who you going to believe, Sean well, May or your lion right, eyes, right? Yeah. Wow. First and 10, here is Ryan Sinatra. And he runs hard off tackle to the right. Takes tacklers inside the Mustang 20 down to about the 19. You know, that just might upset the USF offense, that call right there, and that's probably not a good thing to do when you, got, when you have Green and Sonata and all these playmakers on the field. You don't want to put a chip on their shoulder. I continue to look along the bench to see about Gavin Gardner. I do not see him anywhere no. right now, so when, maybe when you go down to halftime, we'll check on that. Well, there he is to the right, and he looks pretty good right now. He's got his helmet off, but he is practicing. So it'll be second down and four after a run of six yards by Ryan Sonata. Now the Cougars work from the right side hash mark. Two wide to the left for Rare. Long count from the line of scrimmage. Now screens the ball. Blackwell. Blackwell cuts to the 15. Stop and go. And yep. muscled out of bounds. And now there's another penalty flag. And I'm just going to wait right now. No, that's Stephen Evans right there. He had his hand right up in to uh, Will Christman's grill. He has pushing his face mask up and up and up into uh, the sky. 
And Chrisman, hats off to him. He kept his block. As far as penalties, Morningside. Yep. Good call. Morningside's averaging about 72 yards a game in penalties. Not so many last week against St. X. They had just four for 45. But that one now takes it back down deep. And they'll mark the ball shot inside the Morningside 7. So you think about it, Steve Evans checks in 5-9 against Will Chrisman. <laughs> He's 6-6. Six, six. And it was probably all that Evans could do uh, to try and stay on the field. And Sean, don't forget Evans is a freshman. They got a couple of freshmen in various positions now. Here's Green looking, dances to his left, and he will score. Justin Green, officially from seven yards out, and the Cougars offensively are making it look easy in this first quarter. Boy, they sure are. Hats off to the big uglies up front. You're talking about Holcomb, Gamble, Smoger, Shoemaker, and Wood. Just making mincemeat of this defensive front four for Morningside. The time of the score at 30.8 seconds in this first quarter. Now let's see what the, is Gardner coming out? Don't believe he's out there at USF right now. Going to be forced to uh, try for two points. Now Gardner's still down here near the uh, 25 on the far side of the field, or the far sidelines. Can't tell what they're working on. He's kind of stretching one of his limb, limbs out there a little bit. Now to be for, now we're down to two seconds. They're going to have to try to get the play off. Did they get it off? Here's the screen. Did they, did they throw it? And that ball was dropped. Will Chrisman had it in his hands for a moment, but could not hold on. So the try for two fails, but it'll be 19 to three. Cougars with a two touchdown lead when we return to Darcy Stadium. Cougar football on Redeemer Radio, WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. A clean office space. Okay, that's an easy choice, and choosing the right company to clean your business is easy, too. Siokas Professional Cleaning is the choice of a lot of Fort Wayne companies because of the 100% satisfaction guarantee. Siokas does it with built-in check systems to make sure your business is cleaned beyond your expectations every time. First impressions are critical, so make sure yours is always the best with professional cleaning from Siokas. The best people, the best service. 483-2112 or online at siokas.com. Cougars, their biggest lead of the day right now by 16 points. They've scored two touchdowns by air, one by land. And now again, they'll have a backup kicker out there to kick off from right to left. Is that Helmgar kicking the ball? It might be. I believe it is. Well, he is 320, so he's going to have a lot of behind that, <laughs> that kick. Chance for him, and then does a pretty good job. Down deep, far side. Carried inside the 15 along the sidelines. Here's some running room, and then it disappears. But again, across the 35 on the run to about the 37-yard line. That is where the Mustangs will have decent field position with 25 seconds and change remaining in this first quarter. You know, Helmgarn can probably leg press about 900 pounds, so you might want him kicking the ball as <laughs> he just puts his leg into it, gets a nice kick, but uh, again, not a bad return for Morningside here, and they were able to put points on the board on the last drive, so let's see what they do here. Tell America, just pretend it's a running back. <laughs> That's right. First and 10, Solzman looks to Jenkins. Jenkins looking for running room, noses up the middle, got a couple of yards short of the 40, brought down at the 39, and that's probably going to be the final snap of this first quarter, maybe not. Let's see how intent that this Mustangs are. They make some personnel changes. We're down to eight seconds remaining. Connor Niles comes out along with Chad Berg to the right side. We're down to two, we're down to one, and we will go to the second quarter in this 19-3 St. Francis lead. We're number one against number three, and so far, it's going number one's way. We'll be back with quarter two action after this. This is Cougar Playoff Football on Redeemer Radio, WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Do you have a devotion to Lady Guadalupe? Travel with Redeemer Radio Odysseys to Mexico City and see firsthand the tilma of Juan Diego bearing the image of the Holy Virgin Mary. Register by February 28th to save $100 on your trip. Copy that. Information about our Mexico Odyssey, visit Redeemer Radio Odysseys on our website at RedeemerRadio.com or call me, Tina Schneider, at 260-436-2482. Hello, I'm Tom Steele with Tom Steele Tire and Auto Repair. 
a family-owned business for over 35 years. We carry all major brands of new tires, as well as a large selection of quality used tires to save you money. We do all types of auto repairs, be it brakes, alignment, or just fix your air conditioning. Tom Steel Tire, North Clinton or Illinois Road. Give us a try. You'll be glad you did. Back at Darcy Stadium with Sean McBride, I'm Joe Parson. Mustangs have the ball first and ten. Now they move out of the south end zone, right to left. Second down and eight. Solzma motion a little bit. Now they reset tandem receivers. Play action fake. Here's Solzman looking. Throws over the middle. Looking for Berg. He's got him down. Feet. That ball knocked away. It was a little bit underthrown. And Wilmer Cole laid out with both hands and knocked it down. Watching that ball sail, looking downfield. I thought Wilmer Cole was... Boy, he was beat, but he was tracking the ball. That's all he was doing. He knew exactly where that ball was going to be, was able to get both hands on it and just knocked it down. Third down and eight now with Morningside trying to reach their own 48-yard line. Again, they make some player substitutions. They're going to keep Connor Niles so far. He's not been a, been a non-factor, I should say, wide to the right. Empty back, a low snap. Solzman picks that up on the ground, being pursued. That's a get rid of it and throw it away. And once again, they'll have to punt the ball away. Yeah, Matt Swartz, number 94 in there. Pearson Harnish in there. All kinds of pressure. Again, at the battle of the line of scrimmage, all USF, Joe, on offense and defense. So Spencer Wyatt will come back out. I believe this will be his third punt of the ball of the game. He's looking flexing a knee. We mentioned a young man with a big leg. Averaging right around 43 yards a punt for the year, and the kick is away. Boy, the Cougars were coming, Look at sailing that. ball, and uh, they've got to let that one go. Takes a high bounce, trying to get into the end zone, and it does on the touchback. So, St. Francis so far, everything coming up roses for the silver and blue. Didn't mean to talk over you, Joe. That was a beautiful punt. My heavens. And uh, it did get a morning side bounce on the first one, but the second one went USF's way and trickled into the end zone. Wow. Now the Cougar offense comes back out. Three touchdowns in that first 15 minutes. Still looking down to see what we've got going with Gavin Gardner. Don't see him uh, limbering up any longer. I don't know if he's in, maybe trying to work on, uh, and again, I, I don't know whether you would assume it's a leg. Right. Anyway, Cougars will soldier on. Ferrer looking to hand the ball off. Here's a run by Green, and he's got second level running again. Runs for a first down across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Green, so dangerous. Hey, so fun to watch. I mean, again, all these guys in the white jerseys, I've got him, I've got him. Whoops, there he goes. No, I don't have him. So, again, nice run that time by Green. A little more space out past the 30-yard line. Sean, this is the seventh opponent this year that St. Francis has played in the top 25 of the NEI rankings. And... You know, that may, again, we got a long way to go here, but again, uh, you know, strength of schedule, the Cougars have really paid their dues this year. They have. First and 10, now improving field position. Here's Ferrer looking to throw. The rush is on, though. Rolls to his right, looking, throws it long. He's got a man. That's Rixey down deep, and he had the ball and dropped it. Good job defensively that time as one of the DBs, Deion Claybor, safety, able to separate his hands, Rixey's hands, from the ball. Yeah, the ball took just a little too long. Of course, he had to get a lot of air underneath it for it to go that far. But uh, it was a contested ball. And hats off to Morningside defense there for knocking it away. Andreas Gomez Espino now checks into the ball game. First time we've seen Andreas out of Snyder High School today. It'll be second down in 10. Rocky James is also out there. And James to the short side to the left. Too wide to the right. The Open side of the field for Ferrer, but he hands the ball. Here's Green. That time spins off a tackle, but this time they've got him bottled up for a loss. Good play defensively with a loss back to the 29 by the Mustangs. Yeah, he, he was going to take it up the middle, and nothing was there. Tries to spin out of it, but then it was uh, good pressure on the outside as well, closing things down. Really nowhere for him to go that time. Jesse Fallis got the penetration in there. He's a good backup to Caden McDonald. He had nine tackles last week. Two and a half tackles for a loss and a half a sack. Now it's third down and 12. USF trying to reach their own 41 yard line on this snap. Barrera this time's got two wide to the left. 
Gives ground, steps up, throws the left. He's got a catch, but falling down. That was James came back for the ball. And that comeback pattern cost him the first down as he'll have it out to the 38-39 yard line. It'll be fourth down in a long three, and they'll kick the ball away. Yeah, well done by catching the ball, but unfortunately he had to leave his feet to do so. Was not able to get any yards after the catch, so fourth down and the punt team comes on. Nepper comes in to punt the ball away this time. He stands at his own 25. St. Francis won the toss, but he have 10 men up at the line of scrimmage. Cougars was still 10 on the play clock, trying to make sure everybody's accounted for. Trying to get to Nepper. Here's the snap. Kick is away. End over end. That one's going to fall at the 30. Takes a Cougar bounce inside the 25. Still rolling down inside the 23 to about the 22. That's uh, Nepper's second punt on the day, Joe. The first one was uh, 56 yards. So, so we'll see that Mustang uh, offense coming out once again. Yeah, I didn't know what that call was by the referee. I think he was just signaling first and 10 here for Morningside. But uh, again, 12-30 uh, to go. Lots of time left on the clock. And uh, Morningside back out on offense. This is a team that came in starting the day averaging 52.3 points a ball game. Scored 52 last week. The Cougars coming in averaging 45.3 a contest. But right now it's 19 to three St. Francis. Here's a quick out pass. Borg has got it. Touch to the 30. Hates a, takes a big hit, but rolls forward for a first down across the Mustang 35 to the 36. You see that when they were warming up, Joe, that practice play right there. This quarterback, he is a good one. Salzman just delivered it right there in the breadbasket. A good yard after the catch. And to talk about Berg when we get a chance. Here's a run by Jenkins. Slides off one tackle, then got buried at the 36. Talk about Chad Berg. Came in to start the day, Sean, with 68 catches. This is a young man that played for the Mustangs last year. Did not have a single reception. Did have about 12 or 13 carries on the year. But, again, he's kind of come out of nowhere and blossomed as a true receiving target. He has, and he's a good one. He very is very skilled and fast. Now three wide oh. to the right. Bad snap over the head. Solzman's at it, Jenkins, and then he's separated. Knocked down inside the 20, back of the 17. That was Lee Stewart that wrapped up, but what a big loss for Morningside. Wow, that snap was well over the head of Salzma. Going back to get it was uh, his running back, Bubba Jenkins. He picked the ball up and thought he might have a chance with it. No, sir, absolutely not, as uh, Lee Stewart was right there slashing in and dropped it. Now it's third, third down and 27. The ball spotted back inside the 20-yard line of the Mustangs. Rewind to the right. Here's Solzma screens the ball. He's got a catch. Yeah, but that's uh, only for the game back to the 17 or 18 yard line. It'll be fourth down and really, really long. They'll have to punt the ball away again. That is one of the best plays that I've seen Dutton actually perform right there. He had a man on. There was a bonnet on him, and he shed that tackle, went back inside to get the receiver, and stuffed him. Wow, what a play. Shauna, you helped me a little bit here, buddy. Remember that high snap? Who was it we saw playing that had all kind of problems with three snaps over the head? Oh, my heavens. That's right. Uh, it'll come to me. Spencer Wyatt with a kick. That one is going to the far side, bounces at the 50-yard line, takes a Mustang bounce, still bounding inside the Cougar 40 to the 35 to the 33. So that time Spencer Wyatt getting a good job done for the punch. And USF with decent field position nonetheless. 10-26 remains in the first half. Cougars on top at 19-3, now moving again from left to right. Joe, in talking about that, just trying to, to recap, was that Lindenwood Belleville? It might have been. That 70-0 um, shellacking that they I, took. I was thinking it was somebody else. <laughs> Last by well, Bill yeah. Scott, maybe at the half. You know, when you get old, your memory's just not the way it used to be. I don't remember you saying that. <laughs> Cougars with Green in as the one back. In the offense now as Ferrer out of the pistol. Looks to Justin Green. It dances up the middle, carrying tacklers, back pedals across the 35, up to about the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. Justin Green doing what he can get. Got a help from the guys up front with Connor Holcomb and Austin Smoger and Jalen Gamble. Well, and again, just a, just a hats off to the, uh, the big guys up front. When you look at the numbers here that Morningside has put up on defense, the takeovers, the sacks, the tackle for losses, 
We're not seeing a whole lot of that today from Morningside. So it's, again, the big uglies up front doing their job. Green picks up five, second and five. From the left side hash mark, now Ferrer looks to Green again. Starts left, and then knocked down, ran into a wall. And that'll be a loss of about a yard and a half. That time they showed up. They surely did. I believe that was uh, trying to get a number on that one. Might have been McDonald on the tackle. Yeah, Caden McDonald, the linebacker, he's dangerous. He plugged that hole and gave him a shot. Boy, Kevin Donnelly in the free game interview had nothing but praise for that young man. I believe he's the Jeep Pack player, uh, defensive player of the year. 210 pound senior. It'll be third down and six now. Cougars trying to reach their own 43 yard line for Rare. Looking, looking, flush to his right. What's the throw on the move? Lost the ball off for Rocky James, and he then lost the ball. He had it at the 42. It would have been enough yardage for the first down, and now James bent over. And you got to worry about him. He missed four games earlier this season, and he has got to go back down to the turf looking at that right leg. Yeah, boy, oh, boy, that, that's not going to be a good one right there. He, he was standing and, and he couldn't put any pressure on it, so he went and sat back down, and, and now he's being attended to. Cougars will have to punt the ball away, but we have an injury timeout down Thank below. You. With 9.06 remaining, 19 to 3, St. Francis on top will step out. This is Cougar Playoff Football on Redeemer Radio, WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Hello, sports fans. This is Father Bob Garrow, chaplain at Bishop DeWanger High School. It is time to get geared up for our fall sports season. Whether competing on the soccer field, golf or cross country course, volleyball court or on the gridiron, we wish good luck and great sportsmanship to all our student athletes and their teams. May we become the saints we are called to be. St. Sebastian, pray for us. Football fans, the St. Felix Catholic Center in Huntington, Indiana offers one day and overnight retreats with over 70 rooms. Be sure to visit Our Lady in her grotto and walk the 30 scenic acres. St. Felix is a former home of Blessed Solanus Casey. Visit their website at sfcatholiccenter.com to schedule your next meeting or retreat. Well, Rocky James being assisted off the field, trying to keep any and all pressure off that right leg. And that is going to be a big loss for St. Francis. Rocky James came in, had five catches last week. And uh, Kevin Downing said he's just rounding back into play, playing shape with that injured leg, but it looks like it may have been re-aggravated here today. Nepper waits for the snap inside the Cougar 25. One back in punt return. Here's Nepper with the kick away, high wobbly ball. A fair catch is called at the 30-yard line, and that's where Morningside will go back on offense now with just under nine minutes time remaining in this first half. It remains a 19-3 St. Francis lead. Yeah, the defense didn't get much of a blow there, but interestingly enough, what we saw on these last possessions from Morningside, we had some of the seconds in there before on uh, the Cougar defense. We see the number ones back out there right now. But Matt Swartz, Mannion, Muncie was out there before giving these guys a break, but Hemelgarn and his crew are back in here on defense. So it'll be first and 10. Solzman out of the shotgun formation. He's got the running back uh, offset to the right side. Now they reset the wing back to the left. They'll run the ball with Jenkins. Jenkins up the middle. and uh, Looked like he had more of a hole. Did uh, bring it out across the 35 to the 36. Dangerous threat running the football. And a nice, uh, nice job interiorly for the uh, Morningside Mustangs there. Doing a fine job is that wing back on the lead blocker. Gain of seven, second and three. They go to Jenkins again. Tripped up and dropped back at the 36. Maybe gets that. That is going to be a loss of about a half a yard. So third down and short coming up still for the Mustangs trying to reach their own 40-yard line. Coward doing a nice job that time, filling that gap and getting a nice tackle back there, limiting the gain. Again, uh, Morningside with players changes coming up here with still 18 on the play clock. Connor Niles stays in wide to the right. Cougars come up and press coverage on him. And three wide to the left side as Salzman wants to screen the ball. He's got Berg in the middle, steps out of a tackle and spun around and dropped. Cougars stayed with that play very nicely. And that's a loss. 
yeah. back around the 33-yard line. Lee Stewart to uh, mop things up right there. He was trying to break to the sidelines, get out there, and finally go north and south. Lee Stewart was right there with a great tackle and just dropped him there at the sea, uh, hash mark. Wyatt called a bond once again to punt the ball away. He waits back at his own 20-yard line. Boswell and punt return. Looking up into the sun. He waits at the USF 27-yard line. High snap. White got it away. Nice uh, driving ball. Drives Boswell back inside to his 17. Looks for running room. Brings it back to the 25-yard line and gang tackled there. Whistles blow and USF will start first and 10 at the Cougar 26-yard line with 7-11 remaining in this first half. Uh, and again, that USF defense doing their job, uh, bending, not breaking, making them punt the ball away. And now let's see if Will Christman, again, he is the uh, backup uh, to Rocky James. Let's see if, in fact, he's going to be out there getting some touches and uh, moving forward. Interesting looking down the road. We see Joe Nepper kind of practicing some extra point kicks. Uh, did he do that at Dwinger with extra points? He, he did everything. Yeah, at Dwinger. You bet. But Nick Ferrer trying to move the offense now. Green comes out to join him in the backfield with spread offense too wide either side of the field. 19-3 St. Francis. Gegner's caught a touchdown today. He's on the wing to the right. And here is Green trying to run off tackle and drop right there at the point of the attack at the 25. Yeah, safety came up and filled that hole immediately. He knew exactly what was going to happen there. And right at the point of attack, maybe even a little tackle for loss there. Let's call it second down and 11. Green's hobbled. Coming off limping under his own power. So let's see if Eli Wallace now has come into the ball game. Cougars getting beaten up a little bit here today. With Kevin Gardner and Rocky James and now Justin Green. Rixey wide to the right to the short side, too wide to the left. This will be second down and 11. Here's Ferrero looks, wants to throw. Loads up, throws down the middle. Looking, he's got a man and that was, I'll tell you what, they had Chrisman but uh, he just did not get to the ball. No, double coverage out there as well. That cover two defense was effective. And uh, again, he was the only one back deep. Chrisman was for the uh, receiver core and uh, really didn't have much of a shot at that ball. Now the Cougars with 622 remaining face third down and 11, trying to reach their own 36 yard line on this snap. They'd love to keep possession of the football and Manage this clock for the final 622. Boswell, Rixey wide to the left. Again, Morningside still back with cover two defensively. Here's Ferrer. The rush is coming, and he's hit as it and did, did hold on to the ball. Boy, they did not pick up the blitz to his left side. So it'll be fourth down. Wow. He got absolutely pummeled from the backside there, but that's how tough he is. He just gets up and walks off the field. Huge loss that time, and you have to think with kids getting nicked and dinged up right now and really not able to convert on that third down and a huge sack. Is that a momentum shift right there? We're going to find out. Morningside a little late bringing people in on this punt attempt. Nepper back inside is two to punt the ball away. Again, 10 men up on the line of scrimmage. Now they drop them off in return. Nepper long count from the line of scrimmage, waits. He's got it, steps up now, and penalty flag is thrown. There's a punt down the middle. That was right at the snap, and let's see what we've got going here. That was against uh, St. Francis. That'll back him up. And instead of fourth down and, well, it'll be fourth down and even longer. That'll move the ball back to the 10-yard line. Now Joe Nepper stands about four yards deep in the end zone. Morningside will get very good field position in this one. Here's the kick away, end over end. And running up to it, that ball is caught for a catch at the USF 36. So not the best of kicks as it will be Morningside with a great opportunity trying to cut into this 16-point USF lead with 519 remaining in the half. Well, they've had opportunities like this before, and they've only come up with a field goal. Again, 19-3 to the score here and uh, now a very short field opportunity for Morningside, but they need to protect their quarterback and they need to find a solution for this really tough battle test at USF defense right here. A lot of questions though as we head to the second half. How about Green? How about Rocky James? How about Gavin Gardner? Three key components to this number one ranked USF team. Motion left to right behind the line of scrimmage now. Solzman 
resets, looks, rolls to his right side, buying time, pulls it down, comes back to left. He's got green, runs to the 40, to the 35, to the 30-yard line, and out of bounds at the USF 26. He'll have a first down. And again, we talked about Trent Salsma being an offensive weapon. There we see him using his legs that time. So hats off by the USF defense to uh, get a coverage uh, and shut him down that way. But he's got legs, and he used them that time, and they moved the chains. First and 10 now with 5.05 remaining in the half. Solzma with three wide to his right. Looks to Jenkins. And off tackle run, Bubba gets inside the 25 to the 24. That's it. Cougars have done a good job of keying on him today. Yeah, Dutton that time doing a great job that time. Staying with it, keeping his feet churning. Bit the ball, everything you need to see out of a nice form tackle. Call it a gain of about three, second down and seven. Mustangs work from the left side, hash mark. Motion right to left behind the line of scrimmage again. Solsma resets the wing back, looks, wants to throw. Throws to the left side, has got a wide open catch, and they will have a touchdown. That was Addison Ross, came out of the backfield. Nobody picked him up. It'll be a touchdown of 24 yards, first of the day for Morningside as they cut the gap. Beautiful play design that time as he was dragging behind the first line of receivers, and nobody picked him up and uh, went into the end zone untouched. So very, I love that play, and uh, Morningside cuts into the lead. For Ross, that is his fifth touchdown catch of the year. Now the extra point attempt coming up by Jared Amundsen. Right-footed kick is on the way long enough, and it is good. So, points on the board for the Mustangs. And that'll make it 19-10. Now the lead is down to nine for USF. Still 4.27 remaining. And we'll be back after a timeout. This is Cougar Football and Redeemer Radio. 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Stay connected with Redeemer Radio. On the new Redeemer Radio smartphone app, you can sign up for notifications to stay informed with the latest news and programming updates. You can receive alerts for our special broadcasts, The Kyle Hyman Show, Redeemer Reflections, Odyssey Pilgrimage Information, and more. Download the free Redeemer Radio app on your smartphone or tablet by searching Redeemer Radio in your Google Play or App Store. Brought to you in part by Notre Dame Federal Credit Union. Final Four Saturday here in America. As far as NAI football is concerned, the other uh, matchup has in the final four has Southern Oregon. They're playing down at Reinhardt of Georgia. The Raiders against the Eagles, both of those teams undefeated. Southern Oregon at 12-0, Reinhardt at 11-0. And of course here in the other final four bracket, it's undefeated USF ranked number one at 12-0 against Morningside at 13-0. Now the Cougars gotta be careful in the final 427 remaining in this first half. They've seen Morningside put a touchdown on the board. Here's an end over end kick down the middle and that will be taken by, is that Justin Green? It is, and looking for running room and he's not gonna find much. Brings it out to about the 15 yard line. Well, you know when you've had the success by Justin Green this year, Two kickoff return touchdowns, one of 96. Back back to back weeks, he returned kickoffs for touchdowns. You can't fault him for the decision, but again, if you're a little bit banged up, <laughs> you kind of worry a little bit, Sean. Right? Are you running at 100%? That's the question. And again, that was a uh, decision that cost him, uh, you know, four yards there. But let's see. The offense right now needs to get some momentum back. We see that uh, giving Morningside a short field off that huge sack gave them a little push into the end zone. And now USF needs to put a drive together. Both teams with a full complement of three timeouts remaining. Barrera looks to Green. Green, no, he wants. He did hand the ball off on a sweep, and Green just not looking at 100%. No, and again, good job by the defense there, stringing it out, not getting him a lane to cut back into. And so no real gain, maybe, maybe a few inches at the most. No gain brings up second and ten. Well, they call it second and ten. The down marker looks a little bit more by second and nine, so minimal game, perhaps. With the ball up at the 17-yard line. Two wide to the right. One wide to the left. That's Crispin out there at six foot five. 
going to have a big height advantage. The Ferrer looks, looks, screens the ball near side. There is Green with the ball, cuts to his right, gets by one, cuts to the 20, stays in bounds at the 25, and then ducks out quickly. And he's very close to the first down. Let's see what the mark up. I don't think they're going to give him a good spot of the ball back at the 25, though. Yeah, I think he's going to be shy by about a yard here, Joe. But again, he made one tackler miss, was going to try and find another one, but just decided to, uh, to quickly step out. It'll be third down and a yard. And sometimes those can be the toughest to pick up. Cougars with Rixey spread, spread to the left. Here's Ferrer out of the pistol looking to take the snap again. Gives to Green. Green looking and uh, drives straight ahead. Did he get there? I think it's going to depend upon the spot. Angling to his left and uh, still waiting for the officials to take a look. I think they give it to him. And finally, they do move the chains. Have you noticed at this level, they sometimes do take a, a while? <laughs> they do. You don't have the luxury of reviews. But it'll be first and 10 St. Francis now with just over three minutes remaining in this first half. Two wide to the right side. Crispin flanks out to the left green, looking for running room, and goes off tackle and plunges across the 25 up to about the 27-yard line. He'll gain about a yard, maybe up to the 20. Well, just across the 27. Yeah, and again, with the clock uh, now under three minutes here, Joe, it's it's one of the things that uh, with USF, they'll get the ball. Uh, excuse me, check that. Morningside will get the ball here in the third quarter. So try and get this drive down with under a minute to go and don't give uh, Morningside an opportunity to score again. So keep it on the ground. Good mix of pass and run. Let's see what they do. Barrera barking out the signals now. Looks play action fake. Wants to throw. Rollings to her right. And looking, looking, there's a penalty flag thrown as Brewer just has to get rid of the football. He was running out of time, and there is a penalty flag thrown. Looked like USF uh, did maybe have a hold. It is at St. Francis hold. Gegner whistled for the penalty. Yeah, I think Gegner had his hands outside uh, on the uh, shoulder pads of the D end right there. That was uh, Lucas, number 91, that he was holding there. And, uh, yeah, that was probably not a bad call. Interesting call. They did climb the penalty. That'll bring up third down and nine. St. Francis now trying to reach their own 36. So Steve Ryan, the head coach, rolls the dice from a Morningside standpoint. You see Sonata checking in right now for the St. Francis Cougars. He'll be back there probably as a, uh, a protector. Boswell and Rixey wide to the right. USF trying to reach the 36. Here's Ferrer. Looks, throws to a spot. It's got Rixey for the first down at the 40-yard line. Spins forward for another yard. Big, big play for St. Francis. Trying to get into halftime, protecting this 10-point lead. Yeah, Rixey and Boswell in the same zone out there in the flats to the right side. And again, they just turn around and wait for the ball. A frozen rope again by uh, Ferrer. And a first and 10 coming up for USF. Now the Cougars go to their two-minute drill. Rixey stays in wide to the left. That becomes the wide side of the field as here's Sonata off tackles. Got running room as he bowls his way across the 45. Off tackle run to about the 47-yard line. Hits that pull very hard. Puts his helmet into it. Oh, we got a morning side player down here on the short side. But that's what you get with Ryan Sonata. Hard nose running. He'll pick up six. We have a timeout down below with 144 remaining in this first half. 19 to 10 USF. Trying to earn the trip to Daytona Beach, Florida, in uh, two weeks. That is Caden McDonald yeah. trying to shake it off and running off the field basically under his own power. But, boy, that is a loss like, uh, you name it, Rocky James went out earlier. Gavin Gardner went out for St. Francis. Green went out for a couple of plays. And at this level, at this time, you just do not want to lose those kind of quality players. Well, Joe, everybody talks about this being, you know, the real national championship game, and, and we can talk about that all we want to. However, there is another game to play, okay? And you want these guys healthy for that next game if, in fact, they are to move on. So, Crispin comes in. Now he's tight to the right side on a second down and four call. The give is up the middle. Here's Green starts left and can't find a hole. Knocked down back around the 45. It'll bring up third down and longer. Seth Maitland, number 94 right there. Defensive, or uh, yes, defensive end. Came in and swallowed that play right there from his uh, end position. Block moving and stopped with 106. 
And we will have a timeout taken by St. Francis. So 19-10 our score with 106 on the clock. Cougars by 10. We'll be back to Darcy Stadium. This is Cougar Football and Redeemer Radio, WRDF, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Hey, it's Kyle from the Kyle Hyman Show. Heard weekdays from 7 to 8 a.m. here on Redeemer Radio. And every morning we meet you where you are, getting out of bed, drinking your coffee, on your way to work, and through prayer, guests, personal stories, sometimes games, we bring you Catholicism with joy and fun to start your day. So don't miss the Kyle Hyman Show weekdays from 7 to 8 a.m. right here on Redeemer Radio. One of these two teams will advance to play for the national championship two weeks from today. That'll be a 6 o'clock kickoff down at Daytona Beach, Florida, Municipal Stadium, the venue. Third down and six. Cougars trying to reach just Morningside side of midfield. Here's a throw to the right. Looking for Rixey. Rixey trying to gather it up. And did he hold on? See, if, no, he, the ball got away from him. Well, the Cougars, again, uh, credit Morningside where credit is due with good defense, but probably some balls that normally you see uh, the Cougar receivers hold on to. Well, precisely right, Joe. And unfortunately, that, that's a tough one because now you give Morningside an opportunity here with just over a minute to go before the half, and they're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. So defense is going to have to come up big here. Nepper averaging just over 36 yards a punt this year. Waits at the Cougar 32 for the snap. Now they bring everybody up the middle. Nepper's got to get rid of it. Did. Ball's off the side of his foot. It's fielded at the 26, and a car catch is called. So it will be 54.8 seconds remaining in this first half. Trent Solzman trying to engineer a late strike for the Mustangs, trying to draw closer to the trail at 19 to 10. Yeah, the DBs are going to be very careful on this drive. We've seen Salzman and his uh, offensive crew have some success with the long ball here, and that is not what St. Francis needs, getting them into scoring position here to end the first half. Salzma sets up out of the gun, too wide to his right. Now he's got motion. And that's uh, Addison Ross, comes back on the wing the left side. Here's a screen ball, that's Ross. And did he hold on? He did not. They ruled it no catch. That took the clock down to 50 and a half seconds remaining. It'll be second down and 10. Ross caught the touchdown catch on a 27 yard toss from Salzma. Second down and 10. Solzma this time with three wide to his right. Cole comes up and press coverage near side. Rush is coming up. Boy, that should have, and it is a hold. Throw downfield. That went incomplete. Berg was the intended receiver. And Stan Jackson was back there with the coverage. That he was. Mr. Bling. <laughs> That's right. He wants the chain. But here's Jamison right here, pre 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 uh, excuse me, presenting some backside pressure. And the offensive tackle knew he was coming. He got swamped hard. And Jamison was there on the penetration. And he just had to hold on to him for dear life. Penalty takes the clock down to 43.9 seconds. They may change that. It will be. Will the Cougars decline that penalty? Yeah, I think they might have, yeah. It'll bring up third down and 10. Ball back at the Mustang 27. Trying to reach their own 37 on this snap. Now the play clock, uh, just still a lot of left, 22. As they make some personnel changes. Verstag is in, part of the trips package wide to the right side. Empty backfield now for Solzman. Works from the left side, hash mark. Waiting for the snap. Here comes the rush. Throws to the right. Strong arm throwing. He's got a catch up at the 40-yard line. That was Verstag on the catch. The move the chains with 38.2 seconds remaining. A hurry up offense. No huddle for Morningside. Berg just running off the field. Here's Salzman. Looks to throw again. And pet. now the fly. The whistle's blue. We'll have to see with Mike Patton, a referee, has in mind. Cougars were pointing to the ground. The offense substituted and did not allow the defense to match up. By rule, the offense is being issued a warning and any further violations of the substitution rule will result in an unsportsmanlike kind of foul. Please reset the game clock to 34 seconds, please. 
I'm not sure I've ever seen that call made. Basically, the substitution by Morningside did not allow St. Francis to match up. That's a warning initially. First and 10, 34 seconds remains. Cougars dropping off and cover. Solskjaer pump fake, throws to the right. He's got a man out there. The ball was no, not caught. He had it. It was separated. Pick number four that time came in. Lee Stewart knocked the ball away from the receiver. That was a big play right there. I think they were trying to go to Connor Niles. Once again, uh, he's not been all that much of an impact so far today, but comes in with 89 catches. That's second best among all NAIA receivers. And you just got to believe he'll be heard from yet today. Now Verstang, he has been had an impact, and he's wide to the right. Cougars in press coverage. Uh, here, person, person Harney showed blitz, and that causes a false start by Morningside with 27.3 seconds to go. Yeah, I think that might have been Alligator Arms. Uh, somebody on the front line that time was anticipating blocking as Harness was just showing major pressure right up the middle. Well, yeah. Start. Offense yeah, that's the uh, center. Number 59, 6'1", 250-pound sophomore that was anticipating the heat. Second down and 15 now. Ball back at the Mustang 35. Here's Salzburg being pressured, tripped up, got away. Now comes back to his left, throws it away over the middle, and then when falls in, boy, I tell you what, he just threw up a Hail Mary. That he did. Wow, that was dangerous. They got lucky on that one. Only silver helmets around where that ball was about to drop, but they couldn't get to it. Now it's going to be third down and long. Clock stop with 19.4 seconds remaining. Helmogarn and Jamisic that time providing the pressure, and he was scrambling back there for his life. Knew he didn't want to take the sack and just threw that ball towards the middle of the field. Again, highly dangerous, but very effective by the Cougar defense. Cougars trying to save some time. It did uh, stop on the incomplete pass, but it's going to be third down and 15. USF took a uh, timeout. We'll keep things right here as both teams huddle up on the field. Some fun facts about the USF Cougars against Iowa teams here, Joe, overall at home. Because, again, we are here at Darcy Stadium, 17-3 and three overall against Iowa teams. And, um, and, of course, in their last meeting, the Cougars won this contest 42-35 to 35 against Morningside. But it took, it took a great second half to do, to do that. And, again, uh, all time against Morningside, all three previous games here at Darcy Stadium. Cougars won 53 to three back in 2004. A year later, they beat the Mustangs 42-14. And last year was 42-35, as you mentioned, Sean. Now it's third down and 15, trying to get the midfield. They'll run the ball. Jenkins off to the right side, and he's got a first down. Wow. That takes the clock down to 13 seconds. Morningside still with all three timeouts remaining, so at, at the least, at the they can uh, maneuver possibly for a long field goal attempt. So the Cougars were in prevent defense that time. <laughs> Hats off to the offensive uh, coaching staff for Morningside there to call a, a draw with their stud running back, number 10, Bubba Jenkins, who was effective in getting 16 yards and moving the chains for Morningside. Let's take a quick 30-second break. 19-10 our score. This is Cougar Football and Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Do you know that your car is worth more than the no thank you you just got from a dealer? Turn nothing into something powerful by donating that vehicle to Redeemer Radio. All you need is the title and we'll take care of the rest. It's swift, safe, and simple, and you may qualify for a tax deduction. To learn how to donate your vehicle and help fuel Catholic programming on Redeemer Radio, go to RedeemerRadio.com and click on Donate My Car or call 1-866-628-CARS. Cougars looking at Morningside with a ball first and 10 at the USF 47. Lee Stewart, Blake Schumacher back deep in cover two for the Cougars. And here's Solzma giving ground, loads up, throws to the right side. He's got a man open downfield, and that ball in and out of the hands. Connor Niles had it on his fingertips for a moment at the 15, could not hold on. Wilmer, yeah, Wilmer Cole doing a fine job with the uh, tracking down that receiver that time, was right there with him. And uh, also helping that time was number four, Lee Stewart. Now you might be looking at the final play of this first half with 6.2 seconds remaining. Again, some player substitutions by Morningside. Play clock is down to 14. 
They huddle up, or they do not huddle up. They stay on the field. It's for down to nine. And let's see, I think uh, Steve Williams is going to take a timeout right here, perhaps. Yep. And we'll step out as well. 19-10, our score, late in this first half. This is Cougar Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Programming on Redeemer Radio is underwritten in part by Bob Busher Homes. Floor plan customization is what they specialize in. Find floor plans, building sites, and read Bob's story on the web at bobbusherhomes.com. Bob Busher Homes is locally owned with offices in Fort Wayne and Angola. For more information about new home building or remodeling, Bob Busher Homes can be reached at 260-490-3355. With Sean Brickwright, I'm Joe Parson. Welcome back to Bishop John M. Darcy Stadium here in Fort Wayne in the Summit City. Two powerhouses going at it here today in the Final Four. Trying to earn the right to play for the National NAI Football Championship two weeks from today down in Daytona Beach, Florida. Second down and 10. The ball at the USF 47. First stand wide to the left side. Here is Salsma with five, with four. Rolls to his right. Gets, buys time, loads up, throws over the middle. That's a up for grabs, jump ball, and it is going to be caught, I believe. No, incomplete as time runs out either way. We're going to the half, but that was scary, Sean. It hung up in the air. The Cougars got uh, three or four players around the ball, and they couldn't gain control. They just tipped it in the air. No, I'm going to say the Cougars survived that one uh, because that was very, very dangerous. Hail Mary throwing up there and nearly good, but time expires in Morningside now. Uh, we'll go into the locker room down nine. What a game, though. It goes 60 minutes. The first 30 minutes, well, you look at the first 15, everything coming up all Cougars. Second 15, not quite the same. But it's 19-10 here at the half as number one USF tries to earn a return performance and a trip down to Daytona Beach, Florida in a couple of weeks. We'll be back with our halftime presentation. This is Cougar Playoff Football on Redeemer Radio, WRDF, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. The DeHaze Group is a locally owned, full-service insurance agency that has been servicing clients. Copy that. Um, Sean, we got a Bishop Lures live read, and then during halftime, we also have a h &L Electric. Kevin Burns is a proud supporter of sports on Redeemer Radio. Call him at 260-424-5600 for all your insurance needs. The DeHaze Group, exceeding expectations beyond insurance. This is David X with Union Savings Bank Mortgage Department. So happy to support Bishop Lures and Bishop Dwinger student athletes who work so hard to be the best they can be. I'm here to support you too as you look for mortgage lending. If you need a home loan, pick up the phone and call me 418-6191 anytime for low closing costs and great rates. 418-6191. I offer what you want, low closing costs and great rates. Call 418-6191. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. It's the Halftime Report with scores, stats, and insights. Here's Joe and the sports team. Well, football can be a deceiving game. You look at the start of this ball game and you thought, boy, this is going to be a cakewalk for St. Francis. They put 19 points on the board in the first uh, quarter. But uh, then with player injuries beginning to take a little bit of a toll, it turned around somewhat. Let's give you the... Uh, the line score of the ball game, it was 19-3 USF at the end of the first quarter. And then uh, it would be the, the Mustangs with the only touchdown scored and the points on the board in the second quarter as it is 19-10 here at halftime. All started out, USF won the ball, uh, took the ball after winning the toss. Really didn't move the ball, neither did Mustang on their first possession. But on a short punt, Cougars would take over the football at the Mustang 45-yard line, and that would pave the way for a 23-yard scoring strike from Ferrer to Zach Gegner all alone as he took it into the end zone at the 11:27 mark. Now, Gavin Gardner came on, added the extra point, 7-0 Cougars. Apparently, something may have happened to Gardner at that point with the extra point attempt. We have not seen him since. And then with the USF Cougars getting the ball back once again in the second quarter. It would be Ferrer to Boswell. And how about this play with 6.06 remaining in the quarter? That ball was not thrown toward Boswell. In fact, it would be a Morningside defender close to the ball. But again, if the communication, the top of the, you call what, what you will. But Boswell 
made a move to the end line, to the backside of the end zone, dove for the football, that's where it was, and it counted as a 16-yard touchdown. Toss on fourth down, by the way, as the Cougars added to their lead. Uh, try for two points was no good. It was 13-0 USF. Then it would be Morningside finally getting on the board on a 33-yard field goal with three minutes remaining in the, in the first quarter. That made it 13-3. And uh, the Cougars were not done as they would get a seven-yard touchdown run, off-tackle run by uh, Justin Green at the 32nd mark, 30.8 if you want. Uh, and that made it 19-3. Again, the Cougars tried for two points. It was no good. And the Cougars' lead was 16 points at 19-3. But Solsma would find Addison Ross on a quick sto scoring strike, good for 27 yards at the 427 mark. Amundsen added the extra point. That's where we are now at halftime at 19-10. And you look at Steve Ryan, he's in the uh, halftime room and you know that he's talking to his uh, Mustang saying, hey guys, we're right in it. We're down just nine points here at, at, at halftime. We'll get the ball, so the first couple of minutes going to be very key. And if you're Kevin Donnelly, he said, let's get back to where we were executing the offense in that first quarter when everything was coming up roses. And we will find out about the injuries. And But right now, it'll be 19-10 here at the half. We'll step out for a one-minute timeout, and we'll be back with Sean and look at some of the uh, other factors of this first half. Cougars on top here at the half, 19-10. This is Cougar football on Redeemer Radio, WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. The season is officially underway as the Black Friday sales event is going on right now at Glenbrook Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Score up to $6,000 off the award-winning 2017 Not Chrysler that. Pacifica. And trucks are selling like crazy with up to $8,000 in savings on 2017 Rams. Or check out the huge inventory of factory-backed certified pre-owned vehicles, all with massive savings. The Black Friday sales event runs all month long, so get in early to beat the stampede. Under the giant American flag on Coliseum or visit us online at glenbrookdodge.com. As American as it gets. Looking for an orthopedic specialist? Ortho Northeast has been serving the community for 50 years with offices in three convenient locations. Dr. John Pritchard is a board-certified orthopedic surgeon with 24 years of experience with ONE and can assist you with the best treatment plan for your knee or shoulder pain. Dr. John Pritchard is looking forward to meeting you and helping with all your orthopedic needs. Call Dr. Pritchard at 260-484-8551 or online at ortho1.com. Football fans, Bishop Lewis High School, a Catholic educational community that instills in each student dignity, integrity, respect, and responsibility, is proud to sponsor today's game. You can catch the Lewis spirit at www.bishoplewis.org. Well, Joe, we got some first-half stats here to talk about. We're going to start with Morningside, the Mustangs, in the first half right now. So let's talk about this. On the ground, 15 carries for 41 yards in the first half. Uh, through the air, total yards, 116 yards. Those were eight catches on 24 attempts. So total offense for the Mustangs in the first half, 39 plays, 157 yards. Um, on the kickoff return, they had three kickoff returns for 56 yards. Uh, their punts, they had five punts, averaging 40.8 yards per punt. They uh, had a fumble uh, that was not lost. Two penalties for 17 yards. Time of possession, 11 minutes and 47 seconds. Big one right here on third down. They were four for 10, 40% there. In red zone, in the red zone, they had one opportunity and scored there. For the University of St. Francis on offense in the first half, they uh, had 22 carries for 106 yards. Through the air, they had 118 yards on, uh, that's nine catches on 16 attempts right there. Total offense for the Cougars, 38 plays, 224 yards there. Uh, let's see your punt returns, one for 19. Kickoff returns, two for 48 yards. Punts, same number of punts here, five with an average of 36.6 there. Penalties, three penalties all in the afternoon for St. Francis, 35 yards. Time of possession, lopsided, 18.13 uh, minutes. Third down conversions, three for nine. Fourth down conversions, one for one. Joe already talked about that with the uh, score. And perfect in the red zone, two for two. Individually, for Morningside, we've got Bubba Jenkins, their star running back. He uh, had 13 touches uh, for a net of 48 yards and no touchdowns. Trent Salzma 
uh, talking runs here, had uh, a gain of 10 and a loss of 17 on that big sack. So again, net of minus seven for the quarterback, Salzman. Through the air, Salzma again, eight on 24 attempts, 116 yards and a touchdown with a long of 39. His receiver core, Connor Van uh, Stag, two catches for 52 yards. Chad Berg, two catches for 10 yards. Addison Ross, a catch for 24. And Reed Jurgenmeiser, one catch for 20 yards. Spencer Wyatt was busy. He had five punts, averaging 40.8 and a long of 61. And kick returns, Chad Berg, two kick returns for 31 yards. And Connor Miles, uh, one kick return for 25. Individually for the University of St. Francis on offense, Justin Green, number 17, had 18 touches for 115 yards net uh, with a touchdown and a long of 52. Ryan Sonata, number five, he had two touches for 12 yards and a long of six. And Nick Ferrer had a, uh, uh, two runs that time. Of course, those were uh, the sacks, minus 21 right there. Through the air, Ferrer, uh, nine completions, 16 attempts, no interceptions, 118 yards through the air, and again, two touchdowns with a long of 23. He threw it to Sean Boswell three times for 38 yards and a touchdown. Justin Green had two catches for 11 yards. Zach Gegner, the tight end, had a catch for 23 yards and a touchdown. And Duke Blackwell had one for 23 yards. Joe Nepper, same number of punts as Morningside, five. 183 yards total with 36.6 yards. And uh, let's hear, Sean Boswell had a small uh, punt return for nine yards. And Justin Green, two kickoff returns for 48. That's the offensive tail of the tape, Joe, in the first half. 19-10 here at halftime. We're being entertained here at Darcy Stadium by the Cougar Marching Pride. And uh, waiting for the teams to come out and start this second half. Winner gets the right to go to Daytona Beach, Florida in a couple of weeks to play for the NAIA National Championship. We'll uh, take a one-minute timeout. We'll be back with more of our halftime coverage. This is Cougar Football on Redeemer Radio, WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, and diamonds are forever. And since 1988, Peter Franklin has been bringing you the finest diamonds imported from overseas diamond cutters. Peter Franklin Jewelers. Jewelry created from concept to completion by our master goldsmiths on staff. Peter Franklin Jewelers with three locations to serve you. New Haven, DuPont Road, and Angola. Remember, it's not just jewelry. It's Peter Franklin. Are you suffering from chronic pain? Had a knee replacement, an athlete injured in a game, or you tweaked your back perfecting a golf swing? Choose Indiana Physical Therapy for all your needs. IPT is a cost-effective provider that accepts all insurance plans. We offer the highest credentialed staff in the area, and we're open 7 to 7 to see you the same day you call. Find 17 Indiana Physical Therapy locations near you, and we'll get you back to work, play, and life. Celebrating 29 years, Indiana Physical Therapy. Call 260-209-2464 or visit indianaapd.com. Back at Darcy Stadium along with Sean McBride, I'm Joe Parson. You know, usually we see specialists coming out, and we do see Joe Nepper coming out as uh, normally he is just the punter, but I believe he's going to take a shot maybe at extra points, and I think they're going to settle with uh, Helmgarn with kickoffs. But it's interesting to see Joe Nepper out there uh, practicing extra point uh, conversions. Getting a report there, Joe, during the halftime break that uh, Gardner is um – there's something with uh, with his hip. I don't know exactly what happened, if he took a shot or, uh, you know, if it's a, a strain or a muscle pull or whatnot. But you're right. Uh, we, we do see Nepper out there practicing the PATs right here from the 10-yard line. And uh, we will see what transpires here in the second half. There were three key injuries uh, in the first half for the University of St. Francis Gardner. We already talked about with his hip. Uh, Rocky James uh, appeared at least on the field. Uh, to maybe re-aggravating an ankle injury. We don't know, but and Justin Green also came up a little hobbled. We saw him play afterwards, but Joe, as you had stated before, he didn't look the same. So uh, when we go down, when I go down for the halftime and talk to Coach, we'll see if we can get some uh, some additional information there. You talk about specialist, big number 98 coming onto the field, Joe. <laughs> yeah, that's Eric Hemelgarn, who uh, really assumed the role of kickoffs. And normally you wouldn't see Big Eric coming out there uh, early on. He waits with the rest of uh, the big fellows in the uh, in the locker room, but it's coming out now, and uh, I, I believe that's just to uh, see what he can 
limber up a little bit. He'll be kicking off, we believe, to start this second half to Morningside. Yeah, folks, in case you don't uh, know too much about uh, who we're talking about, number 98, Eric Hemmelgarn, the starting nose tackle for the USF Cougars, checks in at 6'5", 320 pounds. He casts a shadow worth two guys, and uh, he is going to be lining up. Looks like maybe for some PAT or some uh, field goal opportunities and, and see what he can do. So it's, uh, it's very interesting to see um, see these two guys out here working on the specialty team play. Yeah, this is a little bit interesting, Sean, because I'll tell you what, Hamilton looks pretty good. I don't know if he did that in uh, in high school, uh, but uh, you're going to have basically a little bit of a kickoff between Joe Nepper and Eric Hemmelgarn uh, right now. That's right. And, of course, Hemmelgarn, he is a senior. He's out of Jay County uh, is where he was recruited from and playing for the USF here. And in those schools, uh, as I recall, Jay County being a 4A school, many, oh. Oh, that <laughs> one wasn't so good. <laughs> but we'll keep trying. That's why he's out there right now. Again, many times you can see these kids out there playing many different roles, going both ways. Again, in those high schools, you have to get those good athletes out on the field as much as possible. So it is entirely possible uh, that he may have done this back in high school. I go back to Kevin Donnelly's pregame comments. He said, you've got to be resilient. That's what he really takes pride in his team. You're going to have highs. You're going to have lows. Well, the Cougars had the highs in the first quarter when they led 13 to 3. They do lead 19 to uh, 10 here at halftime. But again, minus at least a couple of key players as this second half uh, will roll on. Getting ready for Sean to make his way down to uh, ground level will be checking in with Kevin Donnelly adjustments both teams uh, always uh, have to be concerned with making those just want to recap some of the look at uh, some of the stats that uh, we had in the first half as far as penalties Cougars at halftime had uh, just two penalties for 17 yards uh, I'm sorry uh, St. Francis had three for 35 Morningside had two for 17 Cougars were three of nine on third down conversions while Morningside was four of ten. And you look to, uh, of course, the big guys who run the offense. Trent Solzman through the air was eight of 24 for 116 yards, one touchdown. He was not sacked in the first uh, half. And as far as Ferrer, Nick was 9 of 16 for 118, two touchdowns, sacked twice. And to take a quick look at uh, some of the defensive numbers, as Lee Stewart led the Cougars with seven tackles, one for loss, Pearson Harnish with five, Eric Dutton had four, and Jamisich with four. And by the way, uh, Dutton and Jamisich also with a tackle for loss. As far as uh, the Mustangs, Joel Kotzer, had six tackles, one sack, two and a half for loss. Xavier Spann with four tackles. Chase Reese with four tackles, one sack, one tackle for loss. And Deion Claiborne had three tackles and one for loss. Interesting as uh, we look now, Justin Green is on the exercise bike down below right at the entrance of the tunnel. So again, uh, trying to but he got a hit, came off limping, came back into the ball game in that second quarter, did not look the same. And uh, just trying to get loose here as we wait for Coach Donnelly to come out. And where Sean McBride will be waiting down there to chat with him as well. We're ready, Joe. And let's go down and check in with uh, Sean and the coach. Coach, you're in a real dogfight here, getting ready for Daytona. Hopefully, what's the uh, health of the players right now? We saw a couple guys go down. Is, is everybody coming back, or what, what do we know? Looks like Gardner's out, our kicker. Okay. Rocky, it looks like uh, I haven't gotten results, but they took him for x-rays. So, you know, we got the next man up, we got to step up and get it done. Was that the message to the team at the yep. halftime break? All right, good stuff, Coach. Thanks so much for your time. Back to you, Joe. Sean McBride down on the field with Coach Kevin Donnelly. Let's step out. We'll get ready for another 30 minutes of playoff football. Right now, USF on top, 19-10. Morningside will get the ball first when we return to start this second 30 minutes. This is Cougar Playoff Football on Redeemer Radio, WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. I have a special word for married men. Since I'm one of you, our wives and children need us, faults and all. Joe, this catches us up. This is that last one minute 
Forming Faithful Family spot. Oh, okay, great. That'll work out. Totally great. caught up now. He did. God made us men inherently warriors. Just watch young boys playing. How they will quite net. Yes, sir. We we are caught up. Okay. Ten guns or swords. Let's channel the fight that is in us to love, sacrifice for, and protect our wives and children through thick and thin. It is before God that we made a vow when we became united in marriage with our wives. Let's keep it. Quote, so then, what God has united, man must not divide. Mark 10, 9 to 10. I'm Jim Littleton, forming FaithfulFamilies.com. Back at Darcy Stadium, uh, both the teams are out on the field. We get ready for the start of the second half. A lot of questions, especially on the silver and blue side of things. With player injuries, who will be available? Who will step up? And Morningside been held to one touchdown in the first half after really throttling St. Xavier last week by a score of 52 to 7. You know, we talked about the offense for both these teams. Uh, prolific, uh, the Mustangs this year coming into this game, averaging 52.3 points a ball game. But how about the defense? They were giving up uh, just over 15 points a ball game. St. Francis was the best of the MSFA, giving up 16 a game. You look at the offense, Cougars took a lot of pride. Number one in the mid-states, averaging 319 yards a game through the air, but as good as that was, a little bit shy of Morningside, averaging 321.6. If there was one chink, perhaps, in the armor of the Mustangs, pass defense, they were giving up 233 yards a game. Gave up 216 last week to a morning to uh, St. David, despite winning that ball game. USF uh, giving up about just over 200 yards a game defensively through the air. Of course, one of the big things. Defense against the run. Cougars giving up just 81.7 yards a game. That's number one in the mid-states. And Morningside giving up 105.9. Now we're ready. Cougars will kick away from right to left. And Morningside trying to make a statement here on this first possession for the Mustangs. Trailing it 19 to 10. Eric Kemmelgarn, all 6'5", 320 pounds of them, ready to kick the ball away. About three, well, it's probably been a month ago, I had a chance to see one of his cousins at Jay County. Not exactly of the size of, uh, <laughs> he was, uh, I think, about 160 pounds, about 5'10". Here's Hemmelgarn, kicks it downfield. That'll be fielded inside the 10-yard line. Return right side across the 20, 25 to the 27-yard line. So that one returned by Connor Niles. And here come the Mustangs now with a first chance to cut into the Cougar lead. It'll be interesting to see. They had some momentum, Joe. Again, this the Morningside was the only team to score in the second quarter. So can that uh, can that roll into the third quarter here on this first drive? This is a critical drive. Anytime you come out of the locker room, you're rested, you've made some adjustments. Now it's time to execute both on offense and defense. So let's see what happens here. Always tough for a team with the lead tendency maybe to play conservative but you've, you've got you know in your heart you got to play with what got you the lead here's a quick toss left side catch is made at the 30 stop and go move they got a first down up to the 40 yard line so Solzman with the first completion of the second half he found Chad Berg and in, in the flats wide open and again you know will they go with the short conservative pass and give their playmakers room that's a question uh, there was a problem oh. right at the snap <laughs> Well, Solzma was ready to take the snap, but uh, Garrett Shanley uh, never got it to him. Everybody knew the count but the center. Actually, that penalty goes against Garrett Tamay, Temi, I should say, and that'll move him back to the Morningside 35-yard line. It'll be first down, first and 15. Verstang into the game wide to the right side. And they'll keep uh, Connor Niles wide to the left. A little motion now by Addison Ross up on the wing. And flares out to the flat, has the ball to him. He catches the ball, wrapped up at the 40, gets the penalty yardage back. Plus one to the 41. More importantly, he took another shot. Marcus Stepp was coming in with some backside pressure, and just when he released the ball, Stepp took him out. And uh, he's going to feel that one. 
Second down and nine. Ross, a big fella, 6'4", 235, a sophomore. And here's what Jenkins runs, sheds one tackle. At that time, Helmagarn got an arm on him, but couldn't uh, haul him down. It'll be a gain of five yards up, and it'll bring up third down and five. Strong runner, Bubba Jenkins. Uh, again, if, uh, if you're getting wrapped up by Helmagarn to try and escape that, you're, you've got some power. Transfer out of Southwest Baptist University, a senior. Empty backfield now, three wide to the short side to the right. Solzman looks, looks, throws over the middle. He's got a catch made, a tough catch made. And that's uh, into Cougar territory at the 47-yard line. Hit uh, freshman Reed Jorgenmeiser. Yeah, Reed did a fine job. A very athletic catch that time. It was really not on center. He had to go back across his body and reach for it. But he did. And another first down by Morningside here to start the third quarter. Jurgens Meyer, as we mentioned, a freshman, but six foot three. Now here's a, again a bubble screen to the left side. They've got some running room for Verstang as uh, he's wrapped up. Move the ball inside the USF 40 to about the 38-yard line. They're just picking what the Cougar defense will give them in the flats. Yeah, Schumacher on the tackle that time. So yeah, you talked about it, Joe, right there. The the high percentage safe, uh, you know, run and shoot style, quick hitters. Hurry of offense again, Solzma play action fake, wants to throw the home run ball. He's got a man downfield and the catch is made and they'll have first and goal inside the five at the two yard line. Catch by Connor Niles. There is a flag in the backfield as well. And this one may go against Jamisich. As he got to the quarterback right when he was le releasing it. Mike Patton, our referee. So here come the Mustangs threatening to cut that lead down. It's right now a 19-10 ball game. It'll be first and goal at about the three-yard line. Now check they put the ball down closer to the two. First and goal at the two. Let's see if Jenkins will get the call here. As Solsma out of the pistol. And looks, gives to Jenkins at the middle. Spins, can't get there. Nope. Knocked down, wrapped up by number nine, Pearson Harnish. Yeah, again, that's, uh, here we see the makings of another famous University of St. Francis goal line stand. Second and goal still from the two-yard line. Solsma again. Morningside with four cracks at it now. Trying to get closer. Motion right to left. Left to right, I should say. Now back again to the left side. And here is Jenkins. Jenkins looking to get into the end zone. Did he get there? I believe he's short. They're going to mark him down inside the one. It'll be third down and goal from the one-yard line. Referee needs to turn his mic off there. He finally does. Again, another down, no touchdown. Jenkins, to his credit that time, he was very patient, waiting for those blocks to finally make it, but they just weren't there. Morningside, the hurry up offense, but now Solzma wants to make sure the play call from the bench. Walks toward the bench, now back with 17 on the play clock. Takes the snap, looks again, off tackle run. Did they get in? Touchdown. Very broke the plane. Jenkins from a yard out at the 11-28 mark. Yeah, it was actually brought down back again outside of the uh, end zone, but the initial rush that time got him punched in. Six more points on the board. That was a that was an all-business drive. That was the opening drive of the third quarter for Morningside, and they marched right down that field, and uh, they were successful. So Bubba Jenkins, who ran for 27 touchdowns, coming into the ball game, adds one here. Now the extra point to make it a two-point difference. Amundsen with the right-footed kick is on the way and that is good and it's 1917 early in this second half 1128 remains we'll be back with more this is Cougar playoff football on Redeemer Radio WRDF 106.3 FM Northeast Indiana are you suffering from chronic pain had a knee replacement an athlete injured in a game or you tweak your back perfecting a golf swing choose Indiana physical therapy for all your needs IPT is a cost-effective provider that accepts all insurance plans we offer the highest credentialed staff in the area and we're open 7 to 7 to see you the same day you call find 17 Indiana physical therapy locations near you and we'll get you back to work play and life celebrating 29 years Indiana physical therapy call 260-209-2464 or visit indianaapd.com 
Well, Morningside gets what they wanted, a good drive and get points on the board to make this a two-point ball game at 19-17. And, John, you look back a year ago, Morningside scored the first 20 points of the ball game, and USF came back to win. They scored 42 of the next 49 to win it by seven. In some respects, this is kind of the carbon copy reverse of that game a year ago. Well, you're right. And let's see what the University of St. Francis can do here in the uh, second half. Again, we, we've got some playmakers uh, that are not part of the team at this point. Uh, as Coach talked about during halftime, next man up. Uh, it comes down to desire and execution at this point. Justin Green is back deep. Here's a pooch kick coming near side. Fair catch is called for, made at the 30. So it'll be St. Francis with the offensive unit back on. And we'll see if they have the success we saw back in the opening quarter when they could new, do no wrong offensively. Kevin Daly with his offensive starters on the field. Cougars working from right to left. Sean Boswell trots on the field in the slot to the right side. Rixie split wide of him. And they've got Chrisman in the game tight to the left. As Ferrer hands the ball, Justin Green looking for running room. Back pedals across the 30 up to about the 34. And they'll mark him down right at the 35. That's a good run on first and 10, picks up five. Yeah, nice job that time by the offensive line, giving him that seam that time. He got turned around a little bit and was actually pedaling backwards to get some additional yards there. But again, on first down, you'll take that five yards anytime. Green with 18 carries, 115 yards, and one touchdown in that first half. Second down and five. Same set with two wide, well now two wide either side of the field. Ferrer wants to throw, looks, loads. There's a low ball caught by Rixey, but spins to the outside and picks up the first down with a tackler on his back. Good job by Rixey that time. This time it is a completion and a good one. First and 10 coming up for University of St. Francis. Rixey coming in with 10 touchdown catches on the season. Now that leads USF. He's also over 1,000 yards receiving coming in. Last week he had four catches, 111 through the air, a couple of touchdowns, and averaged nearly 28 yards a catch. They need him to be big here in the second half. Cover two defensively for the uh, Mustangs as Ferrer looks, wants to throw again. Low over oh, the middle, and he's got the Boswell wide open. Straight arms one inside the 20, down to the 17 goes John Boswell. Beautiful, no flags on the play. They are set up again inside the red zone. Boswell, they double timed the, uh, the seams that time, and Boswell over the middle was wide open. And uh, what a play that was. I was a little concerned, John, because Sean had, Sean Boswell yeah. had his, and the straight arm up around the I face mask that. of Xavier Spann, but yeah. no penalty. First and 10 now at the 17. Cougars trying to answer the Morningside touchdown. Gingner's in on the wing to the left side. He's caught a touchdown today. Too wide to the left for Ferrer. They'll look and here's Green. Green trying to pick his way and got to the 15. Tried to cut it back to the left and drop right there at the 15, inside the 15 yard line. Yeah, a little gainer of three that time, maybe at the most, but uh, again, this is what keeps the defense honest. This is what keeps the linebackers sucked in so that if you need to, the play action could be there for them. Uh, it could be difficult here when the field gets shorter, but so far the uh, USF Cougars are doing well in the red zone. Touchdown here would look large for St. Francis. Their lead has been trimmed to two. Motion right to left. Here is Ferrer looking, looking, taking a long time, throws in the middle, and the dive, no, the catch is not made. A lot of the span had the coverage that time on Dan Rixey who looks to the to the backside official for a flag. He's not going to get it. No, he's not. He's going to say, look, I've had suits that fit better than that, but uh, he is not going to get the call. It was a tough one to catch. As again, Ferrer, he's a surgeon out there, so he put it exactly where it uh, had to be in order to be caught successfully, but it just couldn't come up with it. Third down and seven. Obviously, the Cougars in four down yardage area. They work at the 14-yard line of Morningside. Trying to capitalize on the fine catch downfield by Sean Boswell. Ferrer looks to throw again. Looking, throws across screen. They got the ball caught, but it's only to the 15-yard line. That was Rixey on a little crossing pattern, but not much yardage to bring up fourth down. Now leading by two. Which should try to bring in Helmogarn or Nepper for the field goal. I think Kevin Downey is going to have to try to get at least the... Uh, Yardage down inside the eight, close to the seven to convert. Boy, oh boy, huge down. Big play in the ball game right here. Two wide to the right side. Morningside Joe's blitz to the right. 
Ferrer looks, looks, pulls it down, looks, checks off, throws left. He's got a catch. That's Christman trying to pull away inside the five. It'll be first and goal. And Will Christman, you know this, it's just a matter of time, and he makes a big play there. Boy, he got it. That was a tremendous catch. Stretched out those arms, brought it back into his chest, tried to spin out of the tackle. Christman, nice, nice job. Chrisman, uh, just 20 catches coming in, but uh, some of those have been big for large yardage at six foot five. He is a big target for Nick Ferrer to look at. He stays in, he's tight to the right. Now it'll be first and goal at the four yard line. Ferrer from the left side hash mark, looks, counter run coming up green, dances right, cuts back left, didn't get much of anything. Now yeah, back to the line of scrimmage if, if at all. And uh, looks to be getting a little chippy down there in the middle, but uh, they separate and uh, they'll have another down here on second down. Four yards to go here, and now it looks like we've got a substitution. Could be bringing uh, a lead blocker in with Chris Smith. Chris Smith checks in. Gigner checks out. I was in my back of my mind. I was thinking, remember, Gigner caught a touchdown earlier. But he's out of the ball game for at least a snap. Boswell stays in, and he will line up on the wing to the right side, joined by Chris Smith out there. Second down and goal from the four-yard line. Here is a play-action fake, a quick throw to Mordek. Goes well with the touchdown catch. Four yards with a little play fake, set it up. Exactly right. Beautifully executed right there. They brought in the lead blocker on the wing right, so the defense is thinking, check that lead blocker and get him out of the way. Play action executed beautifully. Boswell creates separation over the middle. Count it six Cougars. Cougars only there because of that fine downfield catch by Sean Boswell. And now Ferrer comes over and says, what are we going to do, coach? We're without our kicker. Well, and again, they're, they're down four points already, Joe. Remember, they went for the, uh, the PAT twice on the ground. And um, so the score could be 29 to 17 right now. But two unsuccessful two-point attempts. And now it's 25-17. They did reset the play clock, but it's running. And now we're now in 16 seconds, and USF will try for two points. They've not had success today with that. Ferrer's got Green offset to the right side. Gegner to the left. Here's Ferrer. Looks right, checks off, looks back left, gives ground. Looking, 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 and he's not going to get anything done. They sack him back outside the 15. So for the third time today, USF fails with a two-point try bid. But they have increased their lead by 8, 25, 17 over Morningside with 7.26 remaining. We'll be back. This is Cougar Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. For Harley-Davidson, Honda, and Kawasaki, there's no place like the Ellerding family of dealerships in New Haven. Now in our 52nd year, over 300 new and used motorcycles, scooters, and ATVs, plus multi-purpose utility vehicles that tow, haul, and seat up to six. No matter what you ride or drive, let's swap for a new one. Choose a non-current model and qualified buyers get some of the best finance terms in years. Visit Ellerding's River City Harley-Davidson and Ellerding's Honda Kawasaki Motorsports today, just off Coliseum Boulevard on State Road 930 in New Haven, plus our gear store in Glenbrook Mall by Sears. Welcome to our family. Well, Kevin Donnelly talked about resiliency. And Morningside, they start out the second half. They maneuver for a touchdown they had to cut it to a two-point lead. And uh, St. Francis, would they be able to answer at least uh, early on? Now in the second half, they have to build it out to a 25-17 lead again. Joe, from a mental perspective, that drive right there by the University of St. Francis Cougars was absolutely huge. We thought momentum would come out and be with Morningside. USF was able to answer, and here we go. Emil Garn, kind of a squib kick, and it gets beyond Berg back at the six-yard line, picks it up, looks to run, and he's nailed. Never got to the 15. So the Cougars with downfield kick coverage and 6'5", 320-pound Eric Hemelgarn pulled on to be kickoff guy, and he responds. Casey called that time in there for special teams. Number 81 for USF delivered a huge shot and stuffed him right there at the 15. That's got to feel good. Now with 7.20 remaining, Trent Solzma, the six-foot junior quarterback, comes back onto the field. He has looked very good here today. Last series, they basically worked into the flats downfield. When they had to go long, they converted on some. Here's a screen, and the ball is caught near side at the 20. And the ball is lost out of bounds. It'll be retained, though, by the Mustangs. That was Connor Niles on the catch, and more and more they're going to him now in this game. Yeah, he's going to have to be a difference maker for Morningside, as really uh, they have not had much. 
Second down. They haven't had much uh, real success with Bubba Jenkins on the ground here so far. So uh, who are they going to have to go to? Connor Niles. Jenkins did run for the touchdown. And here is a run. Jenkins stacked up. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. At the 19, he will lose yardage. It'll bring up third down. You can see it develop. Jamison right there. The guard and tackle were pulling to come and try and clear him out. And somehow he got in between them and just snuffed that hole immediately. Third down and five. Stang's trying to get out to their own 25-yard line. Now Jenkins, they put him in motion out to the far side as Solzman looking to throw. Looking, a lot of time, now being pressured. Looks, throws to the left side and too high, incomplete. Wow. Intended for Jürgen Meyer. Jürgen's Meyer, and it'll be three and out. No, I don't think it will, Joe. There was a flag in the backfield. That's going to be a late hit against uh, USF. Well, you've just got to play smart in these situations. That goes on Jordan May. So that keeps Morningside alive and with a new set of downs to work with. And you just can't do that. No, you're going to have to play a perfect game against Morningside if you want to walk out with a W. And that one right there, questionable, but honestly, I, I couldn't see the call. So now it's at the 35-yard line of Morningside and a new set of downs to work with. Connor Niles in wide to the right side. Wilmer Cole comes up and press coverage on him. Ross up on the wing to the right. Solzma out of the gun. Now he's got a second man in motion to the near side. Wants to screen the ball. He's got Berg. Berg cuts to the 35 and runs into a couple of the silver helmets. That'll be a gain of a short gain of only a couple of yards. Stewart and Cole again out there at team coverage. These guys are so fast. I mean, I understand trying to get your ball to the uh, playmaker in space, but there is no space. The closing speed by USF defense is just incredible. Second down and eight. Block moving. It'll run inside of six minutes before this play is over with. They'll give the Jenkins up the middle, and he's got a hole. And he's into midfield and into Cougar territory. Blake Schumacher had to make the stop at the USF 47. Schumacher, nice job keeping a hold of me. He had a tiger by the tail right there. He hit that hole very fast, and um, they did a fine job getting that first down. Best run of the day by Bubba Jenkins, 5'10", 205. And now they've got a sack on Solzma for the first time today. James Jamisich there. Again, defensive end did not get sucked in. Jamisich saw the ball, went to the quarterback, and kept his eye on him, was able to wrap him for a tackle for loss. That's a big one. That will take the ball back to midfield. Second down and 13. Block runs now, 520 remains in the third quarter. Niles, they'll split him out to the far side. And Sulzman of the pistol, play action fake, looks to throw again, screens the ball. Jenkins in the open at the 45 to the 40, 35, 30 and steps out of bounds at about the Cougar 23. Well, I really, really would have liked to see the hold called against Pearson Harnish right there because that is what broke that uh, play free. He was getting held by the offensive lineman uh, trying to get a number here. I think it was uh, Trey Bradburn, and that was a missed call. But it'd be the Mustangs on the move once again at the Cougar 22-yard line. Bunch line up three wide to the left out of that motion back to the near side. And Solzma looking to throw the ball once again, being pressured, spins to his left, threw it away. That one is almost intercepted, hung up in the air, but that was Stan Jackson just could not quite get to it. That would have been six the other way. Absolutely right, open field, it was thrown, the ball was coming, it was at his ankles. So if he would have come up with that, that would have been simply incredible. Uh, but again, more importantly, I think, Solzma took a shot again. They are getting into the backfield and making him pay for trying to throw this ball. I'll tell you what, Sean, Stan Jackson just about a half count late and breaking yep. to the ball. Yep. He's got the coverage once again on Connor Niles' far side. Now it's second down and 10. There was movement at the line of scrimmage. No penalty flags. Here is Solzma with time. Throws to the left. He's got a wide open man. And boy, that was to who? Ball was caught, actually intercepted, but out of bounds. It'll be... Did we have a penalty flag? I don't see one, but there's players in the way on the close side. No, I think they're just going to reset. But once again, Jamison came in and just again got to Solzma. It will be third down. 
The ball is still at the USF 22-yard line. Well, clearly Morningside's in four-down territory. Let's see what's going on here. Late clock at 18. Mustangs come up the line of scrimmage. Now they'll split out the two to the right side, including Anderson Ross up in the slot. Two wide either side. Solzman drops, looks, throws over the middle. He's got nobody home. Where was he going with that one? It was either behind the, uh, the crossing receiver by five yards or in front of the curling receiver by 10. There was nobody there. I don't know if he heard footsteps. Maybe yeah. you mentioned he's been shaken up pretty good yeah. by Jamison in particular. So now it's fourth down. They're going to bring in a field goal Watch attempt. It. This will be a long one. This one will be from uh, about 39 yards out from the right side hash mark. It is long enough, got a chance on the way, and it is good. 39-yard field goal by Amundsen at the 422 mark. So the Mustangs get points on the board. Second field goal of the ball game by the field goal kicker, Jared Amundsen. That'll make it 25-20. The lead is five. And we'll be back with more here at Darcy Stadium after a timeout. This is Cougar Football and Redeemer Radio, WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. This is David X with Union Savings Bank Mortgage Department. So happy to support Bishop Lures and Bishop Dwinger student athletes who work so hard to be the best they can be. I'm here to support you too as you look for mortgage lending. If you need a home loan, pick up the phone and call me 418-6191 anytime for low closing costs and great rates. 418-6191. I offer what you want, low closing costs and great rates. Call 418-6191. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. With Sean McBride, welcome back to Bishop John M. Darcy. Save a lot of people thought this is for the national championship. Well, number one against number three, Sean, and it's really building up uh, to be that way. They're they're playing like it, aren't they, Joe? They they surely are. And really, that was a uh, that was a victory for the USF defense right there to hold Morningside to a uh, to a field goal right there because after that halftime break, Morningside came out all business, able to dig, dunk, run all the way down the field. So that was a huge defensive stop to limit them to three points. Last kickoff, uh, Morningside they elected to pooch the ball, not wanting to trust uh, Justin Green with a kickoff return touchdown. This time they kick it down the middle. Green takes a look. He's got it at the six. Up the middle, cuts to his right, across the 15-20, and brings it out to about the 23, maybe the 24-yard line. So the Cougar offense goes to work once again, trying to move the football with 4.15 remaining in this third quarter. The lead is a tenuous five for St. Francis. 25 to 20, they've led today by as many as 16 points. What we've seen in the uh, last drive for the USF Cougars is finding the flats early and often, sprinkle in some Justin Green to uh, make them play honest, and then they go north and south. The last time it was with Boswell on a seam route right down the middle. Let's see what they do here to dial up some points. Green comes in as the running back offset to the right of Nick Ferrer. Senior quarterback for the Cougars looks to Green, trying to move to his left and spins off a tackle, comes back to the right, and then the drop. Now, it took a little bit of a hit late. Back around the 24-yard line. Justin Green on the carry. It'll be no gain, second down and 10 after all that dipsy doing. <laughs> yeah, a lot of theatrics for not a lot of yards right there. And uh, you have to wonder if, in fact, stamina becomes a, a factor here yeah, with uh, under four to go here in the third quarter. You, you got to save something for the fourth quarter because Morningside is not going away. They are not shutting down, and they are in this to win it. So everybody wants to go to Daytona. Who wants it more? Chrisman in now wide to the right side. Still two back. Safety's back. Here's Ferrer looking to throw and looking over the middle, looking for Boswell again. He's got the catch. In down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. That time he beat Deion Claiborne. We talked about it before, Gio, especially you. You said Boswell had to have a game, and so far he is on display. He has got the hands today, and he is beating those DBs and getting behind them. That was a beautiful throw and catch. And credit Nick Ferrer with threading that ball down where Boswell just had to run underneath it. Kept his focus all the way down the middle of the field. That is where he is such a huge threat receiving the football. Now suddenly it's first and 10 with just over three minutes remaining for the Cougars here in the third quarter. Their lead is 25 to 20. They've got it at the 30 yard line of Morningside. Too wide to the right, play action fake again. Ferrer looks, throws the fade to the corners. Got him then, that one just sailed. 
That time, I don't know if there's a wind, doesn't look like it, but Ferrer got all under that one and it sailed out of bounds. Yeah, he had some backside pressure. He probably was feeling that and uh, just decided to whip it out there and let uh, Rixie see if he could get it. Now three new receivers check in. Andreas Gomez Espino, one of them, along with Nate Carson and Duke Blackwell. The Cougar receiving stars of the future into the ball game now. Two wide to the right, second down in 10. And Ferrer again, looking. Green starts right, cuts left. Now darts, oh, I'll tell you what, he got to the 25, and that might have been a touchdown saving tackle by one of the Mustang defenders. I think you're right. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. That's uh, Xavier Ospon that time, who came in number one from his DB position, got a hand, I think it was the thigh pad on Green, and was able to bring him down. He was gone. Oh my goodness, was he gone. Third down, third down and six for USF, moving from right to left. Now we're down inside two and a half minutes, time remaining in the quarter. Up on the wing to the right side is Blackwell. Gegner back in, wing left. And Gomez Espino split wide to the left. Morning sign shows blitz defensive right side, green up the middle, cuts, looks for running room. Spun around, still on his feet, fights his way down to the 22-yard line as Alex Woods tried to come late to help his running back. It'll be fourth down coming up, fourth and about a long two. And here's where the injuries are killing you right now because you don't have a field goal attempt on your hands right here. You're going to have to go for the first down. And, uh, yeah, there's no nothing, nothing easy about this right now. Block with 140 remaining in the quarter. Now too wide to the right. And here is a Ferrer looking to throw the ball, and he's got Gegner. Gegner to the 15-yard line. Beautiful. Gegner just flaring out from his wing back position. Normally a blocker, but he has shown the ability he can catch the ball. He can catch the ball. He's got some wheels, too, so he just does a 45 degree run from the line of scrimmage, and uh, Ferrer flicks it out there so that all he has to do is catch it, turn around, and he's got the first down. That's precisely what happened, and here they move the chains. Boswell comes back in. He's up on the wing to the right side. A little different formation with uh, Chrisman tight to the left. Here's a counter run coming up by Green. Cuts it up. Got to the 15. Second effort might get another yard. Let's see where they mark it. Not a lot as Morningside now tries to key on number 17 defensively. You know, how many games have we called here, Joe, where Green is patient in the backfield looking for those lanes and then finally takes off like a shot. Well, he's patient in the backfield, tries to take off, but again, credit to the Morningside defense. Whenever he tries to go north and south, they are there. They've done a, a fine job at uh, trying to stuff. Justin Green today. Cougars, the uh, one thing they're doing, Sean, they're doing a good job of managing the clock right now. We're down to just 30 seconds remaining in the quarter. Wow. Second down and eight. Ferrer looks left, throws quickly. He's got a catch. Spin move to the 10. And uh, that will do it. Nick Ferrer's pass complete to 19. Boswell. Boswell. And that is Boswell again as the clock at 17 seconds. So it'll bring up the third down call. Let's see if USF wants to go to the fourth quarter or they try to get a playoff. Looks like they're going to wait. We're down to six. We're down to five. They're not uh, even coming up the line of scrimmage. So it will be 25-20 USF headed to the fourth quarter. Final 15 minutes. Who will go to Daytona Beach for the national championship? We'll find out. This is Cougar Playoff Football on Redeemer Radio, WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Make a difference in your life and others by joining. Every great team has focus. Copy that. And at Parkview Sports Medicine, our focus is on you. From performance training and nutrition counseling to orthopedic surgery, athletic rehab, and more, Parkview Sports Medicine's got you covered. You can trust us to bring together today's top experts in sports medicine to improve the performance and treatment of athletes like you. Go to parkview.com slash sports medicine to learn how we can help you and the athletes in your life be your best. Parkview Sports Medicine. Upgrade your game. Dear, do you have any cash? I owe Heather for lunch. Oh, and we need to send Jason money for textbooks. Sound familiar? Now there's an easier way to pay with People Pay from First Federal Bank. It uses First Federal's mobile app to quickly and securely text or email cash and e-gift cards. Oh, I still have to get a gift card for Dan's birthday. I think there's an ATM on the way. Stop hunting for ATMs and start using People Pay. Check it out at first-fed.com slash People Pay. Member FDIC. We get ready for the final 15 minutes, or do we go to overtime? We'll find out. It'll be third down and four for St. Francis. 
They've got the ball at the Mustang 11-yard line. Need about five and a half yards to pick up the first down. Here's Ferrer out of the shotgun formation now. Looking left side, looking, looking, throws to the corners. Got a man, that's a high ball and no good. That ball's been sailing today a little bit on Ferrer, throwing to the corners, and now it'll bring up fourth down. He was going for Gegner back there in the corner that time, and unfortunately, I I would have liked to seen him hit the outlet route or the wheel route on the, uh, the far side of the field there, but he had his mind made up, was going for the home run ball, and uh, Gegner couldn't high point the ball correctly, and, it, and you're right, Joe, it did sail. Again, uh, the Cougars can pick up a first down without scoring. They need to get the ball inside about the seven to convert Green in. Offset to the right side for Ferrer out of the gun. Looks to throw again. Rush is coming. Screens the ball, and that missed. Green, the high ball once again by Ferrer. The pressure was coming, though. So it's a fourth down stop by Morningside, and they will take over the football at their own 11-yard line, trailing it by five. And again, not to harp on it, but again, when your place kicker is out and you don't have any really good options left, that's what, that's what can happen. So they go for it on fourth down because they can't chip in three. And now a turnover, and Morningside has uh, got the ball back here to start the fourth quarter without a USF score. Yeah, field goal would have given St. Francis a lead of eight. And basically Morningside needing a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie. Now a touchdown would give them the lead. Well, and how many points are missing because of failed two-point attempts? Again, uh, they're not going to get the playoff, but did they reset the play clock? I yeah, believe they, they did. did. Yeah. And now uh, referee Mike Patton comes over. And let's see, that that may be delay of game. Yeah, it might. No, they did reset. Please reset the play to 25, and the music needs to stop when the whistle is blown for the ready for play. Well, that's a first. Huh. <laughs> okay, General Patton. I asked him when we were down there, I said, are you related? He goes, hey, you know, I don't really know. It's like, well, then I'll say you are. How's that? <laughs> Solsma will take this snap from the Morningside five-yard line. 14.50 remains in regulation. Here's Solsma now, gives ground, backs up to the one, throws over the middle, has got a man, and a nice catch by Connor Niles. He's out to the 28-29 yard line. It looks like they're gonna try that uh, up-tempo offense again. Niles pretty jacked up on making that catch, as well he should. That was a great catch, and Morningside, uh, another first down. Juergensmeyer in wide to the right side. And here is a run by Bubba Jenkins looking for running room. Does not find much. Gets a, maybe a yard to the 30-yard line. Yeah, not really much there. Jordan May credited with the stop. Gain of one, second down and nine. Cougars need a stop. Here's Solsm again, looking play action fake, throws near sides, got Addison Ross to the 35. Good coverage, Cougars covering quickly, Lee Stewart up there, and it'll bring up third down and four. Another big down right here. No mistakes. Cougar crowd coming alive. Mustangs trying to reach their own 39 on this snap. Solsma, empty backfield, three wide to the right. Short drop, looks, looks, steps up, double pumps, throws over the middle. That ball's knocked away. Good defense by USF. Jorgensmeyer was the intended receiver. Stan Jackson with a huge denial right there. Number 22 coming up big from his corner position. Followed his uh, receiver, closed on the ball, separated it right at the point of attack. That was a textbook defensive back play right there. I'll tell you, Sean, that's been one of the keys today for St. Francis. Yes, they've given up some yardage and balls, but I tell you what, by and large, the DBs have been their equal to yeah, the task. They have. Now Spencer Wyatt waits for the snap. High snap has got it. No rush, really. End over end ball comes to Boswell, lets it go, and it kicks out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. So St. Francis will have the ball first and 10. 13-38 remains, and still the drama continues here at Bishop John M. Darcy Stadium. Who will go to Daytona Beach to play for the national championship? Well, the last drive stalled inside the red zone for the USF Cougars right now because of, uh, again, they don't have their full complement of weapons, so they've got to get into the end zone. That's all there is to it. They've proven that they can move the ball down the field. They can do a sustained drive, uh, but they need to make them count. Ferrer brings his offensive unit out. First and 10, two wide to the left side, one wide to the right. 
Guerrero looks to Green. Green dancing, nothing there in the middle. Second effort is going to use lose a yard back around to the 14. Is now it's Morningside King on number 17. Yeah, they might have to think about a different way to use Green because him trying to find room in the middle of that line has been unsuccessful now for about 10 minutes of play. So uh, they might try and find some other way to use Green. Loss of one, second down and 11. Duke Blackwell comes into the ball game. Boswell checks out. Blackwell has had some big catches, not many, but uh, some big ones when he's caught the football. Barrera out of the gun again, looking. Play action fake, wants to throw. The pressure's on, and he's down at the five-yard line. Got tripped up by one of the offensive linemen with the Mustangs defense trying to converge on him. And now, big trouble for USF with third down and longer coming up. Yeah, that was a big one right there. He was not able to release that ball fast enough to get out of trouble as he was getting pressure from both uh, the strong and the weak side. Justin Green went down and did an excellent job block on the defender who was rushing in, but he was able to pop up and cause havoc after he was hit. Now with 12.30 remaining, clock is moving. Cougars with third down and 19, trying to get the ball out to the 25. And here's Ferrer out of the end zone. Pressure's coming. Screens the ball near side. Here's Green. Green cuts to the 15 to the 20. 25 runs into a man at the 29. Depending where he stepped out of bounds at the 24. That's short of the first down oh. by about a yard. And is our penalty flag down? There is. Now, is that going to be holding is the question. Looks like it is a hold against St. Francis. Holding, offense number 60, half the distance to the goal, third down. Morningside elects to take that penalty. It brings up third down once again. Half the distance, so I'll put the ball back around the three-yard line now. So it still will be third down, and the Cougars still trying to get the ball out to their 25-yard line. Blackwell comes out of the lineup right now. Rixie's out there. Two safeties back for Morningside, but they're up around the 16-yard line. A little surprised about that. Barrera looking to make a quick throw. Looking, looking, looking. Now flush to his right. Throws the ball away. And that's out of bounds. A throw away. It'll bring up fourth down. And Morningside looking good now. Sean with 11.42 remaining. They're going to get the ball in very good field position, trailing it by five. Yeah, you have to wonder on that previous uh, drive that time if, in fact, stopping USF from punching one in had the same effect on the uh, defense here. Gives them a lot of confidence. They were very the stout here, and, uh, and the penalties surely do not help the Cougars. Now Nipper along the back line needs a good snap. They've got 10 men up on the line of scrimmage once again. Here's the snap to Nipper. Had to step to his right. Got it away. High short kick, though. That'll be fielded at the 30-yard line of St. Francis and Morningside in business on the short punt. First and 10 with 11.35 remaining and 25-20 our score. Well, and you have to plead with your defense right here. Don't do anything crazy. Just do what you do. They've been effective against Morningside today, keeping them to 20 points so far in this drive. Good heavens. They need to come up big. Jenkins comes out to run the football. Connor Nile, Connor Niles also out here wide to the near side. Wilmer Cole will have the coverage on him. And here is Solsma out of the pistol lineman now. Jurgens Meyer splits off to the right side as here is uh, Jenkins looking for running room, gets maybe a yard to the 29. In fact, no gain right back at the 30 okay. yard line. Yeah. Again, we see Morningside still having that same issue that USF was there. Their feature running back really not being effective in between the tackles. Second down and 10. A field goal would cut this to a two-point ball game once again. Now second down and 10 from the right side hash mark just inside there. Now they flip-flop. Tight end to the left side and the wing back. Salzman long count from the line of scrimmage. Looks, hands the ball, play action fake. No, it throws the ball in the middle. He's got to catch down the middle at the 15-yard line. That was the freshman, Jürgens Meyer. Yeah, nice 15-yard throw and catch there. Now they're inside the red zone with a new first down. And Morningside's got the momentum, Joe. Got to try to hold him to a field goal. 10.48 remains. Clock moving. 
for staying in. He's wide now, part of a Trooks package to the left side. Jenkins offset to the left. They'll give the ball to, no, it's play action. Fake a throw to the middle, and they've got a wide open catch for a touchdown. That might have been Hunter Barron's the tight end. Yeah, he just did an up route right through the seam, and the play action, the defense really bit on it, and he got lost in the backfield. There wasn't anybody around him for a good 7 to 10 yards. He was alone in the end zone. Time of the score, 10-35. So Solzman with a touchdown toss. Now, do you go for two, knowing that St. Francis does not have a field goal attack? That three-point deficit uh, could be could be big. Steve Ryan came out talking to the officials about something, and we will see. 26-25 in favor of Morningside by one. Jurgens Meyer, they'll split him out to the right. They'll try for two. It's going to be a quick pass, you can believe. Here's Solzman looking, looks right, throws the ball. He's got a man at the goal line, and it will be a two-point conversion catch. So it will be 28-25. The Cougars now down three with 10.35 remaining. And the Mustangs have got their first lead of the day. We'll be back with more. This is Cougar Playoff Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. This is Cindy Black, Executive Director of Redeemer Radio. We hear many stories of how God has spoken to people's hearts through Redeemer Radio with what they need, when they need it. Priests share that people have come to confession after many years away. Young adults who have doubted their faith are reassured by what they hear. Non-Catholics who have journeyed into the church often cite Redeemer Radio as a key influence. Lives are being transformed thanks to our generous donors. You too can join our mission by going to RedeemerRadio.com or calling the station. Welcome home to your family of faith. Well, it's a change here at Darcy Stadium as now St. Francis will have to play from behind. Trailing at 28-25. Cougars led by as many as 16 early in the first quarter at 19-3. The first half, I should say. But now they've got to dig down deep and find out what they're made of. Cougars will move the ball left to right. Justin Green in kickoff return formation back inside the five-yard line. Picked up an injury in the first half. It's really not looked the same since that point. Here comes the kick. Down the middle, right, right side. Green in the end zone will take a knee. And that'll come out first and 10, USF. Will move the ball. And basically 75 yards away from trying to take the lead back. Well, and how to do it, Joe, there's the question right now. We've seen uh, Boswell coming up very big here in the second half. Uh, unfortunate that they were not able to convert on that one drive. And then the last drive, honestly, they're just going to have to forget that ever happened. Uh, they can't let that stick in their crawl and, and, and have a memory of that. It's about this play, it's about this down, and it's about getting that ball into that end zone right now. Use that term, next play mentality. If ever meant anything, it's right now. Two wide either side of the field. Barrera takes the snap, gives to Green, cuts it off, tackles, steps out of one tackle, and uh, moves it up to about the 30-yard line. They would have got five yards where it did not look like he had much. No, a nice five-yard gain that time by Green. And it looks like, once again, their star uh, linebacker, McDonald down on the turf. Yeah, they're going to come out and uh, pay attention to him. So we have an injury timeout with 10-18 on the clock. Plenty of time remaining in this ball game. And McDonald limping heavily, being assisted now on his feet, but out of, off the field. Trying to shake it off if he can. But that allows uh, Ferrer to come over to the near sidelines and talk to Kevin Donnelly. And, and the play they want to execute now. Now the clock runs again. Second down in five. Cougars working from the left side hash mark. Too wide to the right side of Ferrer. With the snap, short drop, looks right, throws the ball, tipped, and no grab by Frixie. Straight arms one, and uh, gets the first down. Across the 35 up to about the 38. I thought that ball was tipped in initially. Yeah. No, it, it looked like it. It did not travel well, but Rixie had the ball, was trying to get something done out there in space. And a lousy spot back at the 39-yard line, but, but the first down counts. Proving field position for the Cougars now with 9.45 on the clock. Plenty of time. USF now, first and 10. 
Barrera again looks to Green. Green quick burst to speed. Oh, no. Second level, he's got a chance if he can keep it up inside the 20. 15, 10, mark it on the board. The Cougars with Green from 61 yards out and a touchdown to the house at the 9.27 mark. You needed a big play, you got it. Oh, and who does it but Green? Unbelievable. That was what we needed right there. That is a huge shot in the arm. Stands are bedlam right now, and again, Justin Green gashes through the middle, off tackle left, goes back towards the middle, and he's in the house. 61 yards. Wow. Now again, the decision for Kevin Donnelly. The lead is three, but no real field goal kicker out there. The Gavin Gardner and the hip injury. Not available. They'll try for two. They failed three times today on two-point conversion attempts. This time they've got Boswell up on the wing to the right side. This one is huge, folks. Boswell motion right to left. And here's Ferrer. Looks, throws the ball, and no good, but a penalty is thrown. I think he got there a little early. Ripsey was the intended receiver in the end zone. Not done yet. 31-28 St. Francis. So they'll move the ball half the distance. And now Green will come back. Sonata was out there for that uh, first uh, two-point try. And now you got a little different scenario. That ball is going to be put down just outside the one. Now 33-28 looks a lot better than a three-point lead. Smith in, offset to the right side. The give is to Green, and he won't get there. No. Wow. Stopped short. Good defensive play by the left side of Morningside. So it remains 31-28 with 9.27 to play. And for the fourth time today, the Cougars on a two-point try fail to convert. We'll be back. This is Cougar Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Howdy folks, this is Jimmy Aiken from Catholic Answers Live, which is heard right here on Redeemer Radio weekdays from 6 to 8 p.m. On Catholic Answers Live, we take live phone calls and offer Catholics and non-Catholics an opportunity to hear from and talk with some of the leading apologists and theologians in the church today. Thank you for listening to and supporting Catholic programming like Catholic Answers Live right here on Redeemer Radio. With Sean McBride, I'm Joel Parson. Boy, you can sense the tension building here at Darcy Stadium. Still just under nine and a half minutes remaining. St. Francis using the legs of Justin Green with a big run down the middle, 61 yards. And they're on top of this seesaw effort now, 31-28. What we see consistently, Joe, throughout this year is that both of these squads, offense and defense, feed off of each other. So this is a great thing for USF for that. Their offense come out. So now we'll see what the defense can do. Hamilgarn drives the ball. Taken by Berg inside the 15. Crossing move over to the right to the 20. Looking for running room. Gets it. Turns the corner at the 25 to the 30. And out of bounds up around the 33-yard line. Maybe the 34 is where Trent Solzma and the Mustang offense go to work. Well, that Cougar defense has... Made some big plays today. They need to make a plays once again now with 9.18 remaining. Both teams with all three of their timeouts remaining. It's going to be absolutely critical when uh, the Mustangs go north and south that the defensive backs don't get crazy and play as best they can, but no mistake. Need mistake-free football right now. Too wide to the left side, including Connor Niles. Here's Jenkins and trying to step out of a tackle. Pearson Harnish holding on for dear life. He'll have a yardage gain down to about the 39-yard line. Yeah, gain of three or four that time, and uh, I think USF will be fine to give that to them if they can create a third down uh, opportunity here. Second down and six. Solzma's going to spread the offense again. Empty backfield. Three wide to the left side. Looking, looking, throws the ball up. He's got to catch a spin move for a first down to midfield and into Cougar territory. That one caught by Connor Niles. Yeah, Niles is a player. He's got some great skills out there, makes people miss, and he gets them into Cougar territory after that catch. Remember, a field goal would tie the game with 8.43 remaining. They'll move that ball back to the USF 48, first and 10. Solskjaer again looking, wants to screen the ball far side. That catch is made 
and there's Connor Niles, and it looked like the Cougar defender so ran right by the play. <laughs> Not yeah, sure. Joe, he was the inside receiver, so the outside receiver took the defender outside of him and down that field uh, deeper, so he had a lane. That's and it worked. Gain of seven, second down and three. Hurry up offense for Mo the Mustangs now. Salzman has motion by Jurgensmeyer once again from left to right behind the line of scrimmage. Takes the snap, gives ground, looks, loads up, throws the home run ball down the right side. He's got a man out there, and the ball incomplete. Wilmer Cole had the coverage trailing Berg. Cole never really had an opportunity to turn around, and the official was just staring them down, looking for any chance to throw that flag, and he did not have it. So great job by Wilmer, Wilmer Cole in coverage. Tough chance for Berg looking back into the sign as well. Into the sun, I should say. Now it's third down and short with just over eight minutes remaining. Bunch line up to the left side. One of them is Tanner Verstang. Empty backfield once again. Now they reposition Addison Ross to the right wing. Here's Salsma looks back, throws back to the right, and they've got a first down. And that was Connor Niles. He fed off a couple of blockers and took it to the USF 32. Yeah, great play that time. Just to get a curl in screen that time. He was outside, curled back towards the middle. Good timing that time between the quarterback and the receiver as the ball was right there on the curl and he was able to get north and south and get that first down. And now on this series, USF not really able to get to quarterback Salsma to pressure him. They'd love to do that right now on first and 10. Motion again from right to left behind the line of scrimmage. Harris Salsma looks to Jenkins. Jenkins trying to find running room, stacked up, leans forward to the 34. Not much there. Helmogarn blocked up the middle nicely. Yeah, 320. I think Morningside's looking for that breakaway trap play, and I just don't know if they're going to find it. Steve Ryan shuttling troops in, shuttling, shuttling troops out. Chad Berg checks out of there. They'll bring in Addison Ross once again. Also, the freshman Jurgens Myers had a couple of big catches. He's part of two wide receivers to the left side for Salzman. Now he's got motion this way as well. And now Sulzman looks play action fake, looking left, looking, looking, and flush to his right side. He's got all green to the 30, to the 25, trying to tiptoe along the sidelines and finally knocked down. As the Cougars were trying to pinch into the middle, they lost containment to the defensive left side. Well, and great job by, uh, by that uh, middle linebacker, uh, Pearson Harness. He just ran flat out, took a good pursuit angle, was able to get uh, a little bit of contact, enough to get that quarterback out of bounds. Another first down though for Morningside. They're at the USF 24 yard line. Working again from the right side hash mark. Three wide to the left for Sulzman. Very calm, cool and collected now. Wants to screen the ball. He's got a low ball to Connor Niles that bounced into him incomplete. So it'll be second down and 10 as the drama continues with 629 remaining. 31-28. St. Francis by three. Yeah, this morning side offensive attack right now consisting of really short, high percentage passes, getting your playmakers open off of the screen with a couple blockers in front of them. So the bubble is working well for them so far on this drive. We're staying in wide to the left, the lone wide out here. Play action fake, Salzman rolls right, throws short, complete Addison Ross down the right sidelines, and Still in bounds, did he get in for a touchdown? Out of bounds inside the five to the two. He's had a couple of big catches today and there was another one. Just to hit the outlet pass, he was in the backfield, wheeled out to the right side, got a downfield block, and they are set up. Clock stopped with 6.22 remaining as he went out of bounds. Sulzman now, first and goal, inside the three. Here's Jenkins trying to nudge it in. Did not get in. In fact, they mark him down at about the two. Yeah, it looks like a loss of one there. Again, they try the middle of the line, and uh, nothing there once again. Three players check out. Three new players check in. Or morning side. Offensive line starting today, averaging 274 man tackle to tackle. Play clock still at 20. A lot of time for the Mustangs to determine what they want to try to do. Jenkins stays out there. Jurgensmeyer set up basically tight to the right. Tight formation now. Offset eye to the left side. Salzman in the middle. Now motion by Anderson Ross to the right wing. They'll reset. And here's the throw. 
coming up and a throw back side. The ball is caught. No good. Across the end line, it did not get a foot in bounds. Jurgensmeyer pointing out to the official. No good. It'll bring up third and goal. Uh, the call's been made, young man. You were out of bounds. And the ball sailed just a little bit that time. It was enough to actually, he had to go up and get it. And then he was out of bounds when it came down. Cougar is trying to hold on to this three point bulge. Not much of a bulge, but it is a lead. Play clock at 16. Morningside still bringing troops in, sending troops out. Now they come up to the line of scrimmage once again. They will have one wide Niles to the right and Berg wide left. And here is Saltzman looking. Wants to throw over the middle. He's got, they missed him right open. That was Addison Ross. He was by his lonesome. And the ball was about five feet over his head, incomplete. Now it's fourth down. And they'll bring in the field goal team to try to tie the game with 5.24 remaining. Wow. This will be a short one as Amundsen today from 33 yards out and 39. This one will be basically about 24 yards out but a sharp angle from the right side hash mark. Trying to tie Amundsen. That oh. ball's not going to get there. With, not handled on the, on the snap. And it remains 31-28 St. Francis with 5-20 remaining. Oh my heavens, what a turn of events for USF right there. It was a bad hold, and they were not able to get it off cleanly. He had to take a re-step and just take a swipe at the ball, and it was no good by a long shot. Wow. Well, it's going to be good news, bad news. With 5-20 remaining, 31-28. Well, they will bring that ball out to the 20 yard line. So the Cougars now, both teams still with all three timeouts remaining, but if they can pick up a couple of first downs, they've got a chance to go to Florida. Oh my goodness. Who would have guessed, right? Oh my goodness. Interesting, that, Sean, they've only attempted three field goals all year. Right. And the kid hit two today. Yeah. He was two out of three coming in. Now Ferrer has got to take care of the ball. Gives the green. Green not going anywhere. Stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. In fact, maybe lost a yard back around the 19. Uh, looks like a late flag coming out on the far side of the field, too, here. Mike Patton will let us know. Morningside's backing up. Wow. Let's see. Personal foul. Face pass. Defense number 49. Mustang, that is a penalty that hurts with 5.14 remaining. Personal foul takes the ball out to the St. Francis 35-yard line now. Really, if this has been a pretty clean game, Joe. When you talk about the penalties, I think uh, if, in fact, we look at the end of the third quarter here, uh, Morningside had three for 22 and St. Francis had five for 51. So that's a pretty clean game. Clock moving inside of five minutes now. Too wide to the right for Ferrer, but he wants to go to Green. Looking for running him off tackle. And a burst of speed carried him out to the 40. Maybe to the 41. Now they're going to mark him down right at the 40. That's a gain of five. And again, we see them going to the left side over there with Justin Green. They might have found something that's the same exact hole where he was able to tear off that 61-yard touchdown run. Nobody has left Darcy Stadium with 4.35 remaining. Clock is moving. Cougars with a tenuous three-point lead here at home at 31-28. They've won 21 in a row going back to last season. Will it be 22? Love to see attendance here today, Joe. All of Fort Wayne and Northeast Indiana has shown up. We've got standing room only here in the grandstands. People lining the fence. This is this is what it's all about. Second down and five. Just over four minutes remains. Ferrer, stretch handoff. There's Green pushing the line. Gets a couple of yards, maybe a yard and a half across the 41. It'll bring up a third down call. Third and a long three still coming up for St. Francis with exactly four minutes remaining in this playoff football game. Well, and again, a great call that time. Keep it on the ground. Keep it safe. And again, grind that clock down. Third and three now is pretty manageable for this offensive unit right here. And now they're taking their time picking the exact play that they want to do. Play clock at 18. Cougars do huddle up. Ball is placed. Those are the football at the 42. They've got to get to the 45. Christman in wide left. There's Boswell in the slot left side. And Rixey wide right. 
Green the running back as Ferrer out of the gun wants to throw. Look, screens the ball. Green's got it for 40. 45! He's got it under him. Down to the 40-yard line. Cuts in the middle of the field to the 45-yard line. And USF looking good right now with 316 remaining. Nick Shoemaker, the right tackle out there, did his job to perfection. He pulled out there, was a lead blocker for Green, and he stuck that open field block. Very athletic play for the 6'3", 266-pound sophomore. Joel Kotzer down on one knee, slow getting up. For actually comes over to minister to him a little bit. <laughs> Kotzer now back up, and whatever was the problem, hands on hips, he's coming off the field under his own power. But USF now first and 10 at the Morningside 35-yard line. Got to hold on to the football. Don't need points, but time is your ally. And you need to hold on to the football. <laughs> Can't say it enough. <laughs> well, they're just promoting mass coming up here at 4 o'clock. In case you're looking for something to do. Something to do, <laughs> sure. All right. First and 10. Play clock uh, is now beginning to run. USF trying to, and the game clock as well. We're inside of three minutes time remaining. St. Francis in the driver's seat trying to hold on to the football, trying to pick up maybe another first down or two if they can. Boswell stays in, split to the wide side. Rixey was lined up wrong. Now they reposition him wide left with three, with two. Ferrer got the play underway, gives to Green. Green off tackle. No, it's Sonata in there and plunges off tackle inside. And they're going to mark the knee down at the 31. I don't like the spot. No, I don't either. But uh, again, on first down, that's that's great. That's okay. Again, Sonata with another hard nosed run. It looks like we've got a timeout on the field. Here we go. I believe it's the Morningside takes their first of three. They've got two remaining. 31 28. Cougars 226 away from a fourth into the national championship game. We'll be back. This is Cougar Football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. This is David X with Union Savings Bank Mortgage Department. So happy to support Bishop Lures and Bishop Dwinger student athletes who work so hard to be the best they can be. I'm here to support you too as you look for mortgage lending. If you need a home loan, pick up the phone and call me, 418 6191 anytime for low closing costs and great rates. 418 6191. I offer what you want, low closing costs and great rates. Call 418 6191. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. What a game. There's been more twists and turns, ups and downs for both teams. Cougars led 19 to 3 early on, then trailed. But now a battle back to lead at 31 28. They've got second down and six coming up. Working from left to right, Ferrer looks. Sonata starts left, cuts right. Gets yardage gain down inside the 30 to the 28 yard line. And once again, I believe Morningside may call a timeout. That will take the clock to 2.20 remaining. They'll have one timeout remaining with a third down and five coming up by call for St. Francis Shot. Football fans, just a reminder that H&L Electric is your full-service electrical contractor from commercial and industrial to residential work. H&L Electric can handle the smallest to the largest of projects for your business or residents. Call Pete Henry at H&L Electric. With no Gavin Gardner injured early in the ball game, the Cougars forced on two-point try conversions four times today they failed four times but then Morningside with a chance to tie the game on a bad snap that was mishandled on the hold and the cat kick was no good and that leaves us right where we are 31 28 St. Francis as the ball at the 24 29 yard line of Morningside with third down and a long four coming up USF trying to get the ball down right to the 25 on this snap, or maybe, maybe Kevin Downley will go for it on fourth down. We'll find out. Green again, off tackle, left side. Spins back, pedals, he's got the first down. Inside the 25, still pushing the back. Inside the 20-yard line. What a play by Justin Green. Mark him down, and there was Sean Boswell leading the way as well. <laughs> That's exactly right. Hats off to the big uglies up front, giving him room, giving him space, and a tremendous push. Student body left. And they move the chains. Unbelievable. Two minutes to go now, Joe. They're sniffing it. They are sniffing the trip to Daytona Beach. I believe that whistle blew, and they make the ball, mark the ball down dead at the 20-yard line. Clock inside of two minutes. 150 remains. 
Member of Morningside, one timeout only remaining. Crispin and wide to the left. Don't expect a throw here. Rixey wide to the right. They, everybody comes up uh, short as here's a run inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. And once again, Morningside will take their final timeout with 95 seconds remaining. And second down and nine coming up for St. Francis. Tell you what, we'll step out for a quick 30. 31 28, but don't go away. This one going down to the wire. Cougar football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast from Indiana. What passions do you want to pursue next in life? Do you want to be a sculptor, a volunteer, teach your grandkids to fish? As a financial advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, Reinbold and Anderson can help. Yeah, yeah, we're good on spots, Joe. Everything else is local spots, so take or leave. Okay, whatever we call Ryan Bolden Anderson at 260-432-3235. Offices located at 5750 Coventry Lane, Suite 110, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46804. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Member FINRA and SIPC. Back at Darcy's table with Sean McBride. I'm Joe Parson. Well, it's not over yet. You can't celebrate yet. 135 on the clock got to control the football it'll be second down and nine and uh, now no timeouts remaining for Morningside they will have all 11 men within about six seven yards of the line of scrimmage and here's Ferrer gives to Green Green burst to speak touch to the outside he's got a chance he will score a diving touchdown to the left corner of the end zone icing on the cake Cougars going back to Florida oh my heavens once again, we talk about Justin Green. Just when you think he's down, just when you think there's nothing left, he takes that hop step, he evades, he twists, and he runs to the house. Another six points on the board for USF. Warm up the vocal cords because the fat lady's about to sing. 37-28. Well, now you don't have to worry about an extra point kicker at this point. Your lead is nine. Cougars will try for a two-point conversion. Will the fifth time be the charm? Well, last year they were down 20 to nothing to Morningside. Rallied to win 42-35. Today down here in the second half, they've rallied what was a three-point lead. Here's Ferrer now, looks quickly, throws right, nobody home that time. So <laughs> 0 for 5 on two-point conversions, but now Morningside with no timeouts remaining. They will get the ball back with 127 on the clock, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. Cougar football on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. Hello, this is Mike Ripley, board chair at Redeemer Radio. This year, I encourage you to turn your financial support into a recurring gift to maximize your investment in reaching more souls with the message of God. Once you become a recurring gift partner, you'll be automatically enrolled in our St. Gabriel Perpetual Gift Society with both spiritual and practical benefits. You can review all those benefits and join our St. Gabriel Perpetual Gift Society today at RedeemerRadio.com. USF uh, ready to kick the ball away. Eric Hemmelgarn has, in a sense, been a real uh, bailout to Savior today. Coming in for Gavin Gardner to uh, place kick this ball. They haven't had the confidence in Big Eric to try him on the uh, extra points. No, they have not, but uh, he's doing a fine job pinch hitting today with the big leg down on the uh, on the kickoff team. Short approach, kicks it far side. Short kick, it'll be fielded at the 17. Here's a run near side now by Connor Niles. Niles I got across the 25 to the 27. So, final possession, maybe, for Morningside with 122 on the clock but down nine here on the road against the top-ranked Cougars. See on that uh, stop, Devin Green, number 45, coming in and, uh, and wrapping him up just north of the 30 right there. Special teams uh, have really done a fine job today. And, uh, and really, USF playing a complete game today, Joe, minus the, uh, the two-point conversion. That's, you know, that's 10 points they've left on the field. So... Well, this can be a really fickle game, and you know, you have a short kick to tie the game, and that does not come about for the Mustangs. Now Jenkins out of the backfield, right side. Here is Sulzman looks, flush to his right, being pursued. Got, had to throw the ball away with a minute 16 remaining. Cougars pointing. They felt that uh, maybe that should be grounding. Mike Patton, the officials talking to him, and now they do throw the fast play. Yep, they got it. 
Good call. Again, great pressure that time by Jordan May running down the uh, quarterback. And uh, yeah, so Justin gonna, Green. Yep. And how about that? Uh, Eric Helmogarn for me. We're naming our ballots for the players of the game. Bill Scott waiting patiently. He's going to be running his rear end off here <laughs> shortly. <laughs> Thanks, like a salmon upstream. Here's Solzman, empty backfield. Throws of the middle. Looking, nobody home. Intercepted at the 37 yard line. Here's Stan Jackson. Jackson cuts middle of the field. Get the high one. Go to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. Looking to the house. Touchdown, Jan Stan Jackson. Adding icing to the kick with 59.9 seconds for cup play. Break out the chain for Stan Jackson. It was his idea in the first place, and he gets to wear the turnover chain. Stan Jackson with an exclamation point on the game. They bring it over to the sidelines. There's the chain. He's going to put it on and stand on top of the bench, surrounded by that defense. There it is. There it is, right there. Pick six by Stan Jackson. You know, people are going to look at the score and they're going to say, yeah, ho hum. <laughs> Cougars at home, 43-28. Tell you what, this was anybody's ball game, Sean, until that missed field goal. That's precisely right. Yeah, and who knew that that would be the catalyst uh, for St. Francis to finish this way and this strong. What a game this has been. When you're number one, everybody brings their A game against you, and the Cougars minus key personnel today. They're going to try a field goal with Nepper, uh, extra point, I should say. Boswell will hold. Nepper will try to make it 44-28. Waiting for the snap. Here comes the rush. The kick low. Never had a chance, so nothing new there. <laughs> That's right. Cougars content with touchdowns today for the most part, other than the start of the ball game. But their lead is 43-28, and they're on to Florida. Still 59.9 seconds remaining in this ball game. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Cougar football and Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. May I share an effective way of achieving the loving, unified family life that we all want? When we fail in... So we'll... By the way, we'll just have one more h &L electric sometime during post-game or whatever. Sorry. Forgive, forgive, and forgive some more. Forgive swiftly as Jesus has forgiven you and with the help of the Holy Spirit. Do your best to forget offenses. I'm Jim Littleton, forming FaithfulFamilies.com. Well, we always uh, talk about how a game can turn around in the game of football. Cougars looked like they were going to walk to an easy victory in the first quarter. Injury took their toll. And Morningside never went away today, Sean. But uh, when it came down to some key play conversions, they just couldn't finish the deal. And St. Francis now, in this last uh, minute or so of this ball game, they have just extended a big, big lead out now. Well, they surely have. And as Helmgarn, you know, kicks the ball again, uh, this <laughs> one's going to trickle out of bounds. Really not bad uh, for him stepping into this role here today and doing a fine job. But uh, but hats off to Morningside. Like you said, Joe, they, they came to win, and, uh, and they showed up, and they gave their very, very best and, uh, and tried to do so. So for football fans, just a reminder one last time that h &L Electric is your full-service electrical contractor. Pete Henry and his crew can take care of everything from commercial and industrial to residential. So give Pete Henry and his crew a call at h &L Electric. Hemelgarn on the sidelines, he's asking the coaches, I want to go back in. <laughs> they said, well, you know, I have to <laughs> look at Kevin Dowley, big bear hug on six foot five, 300 ton, 20 pound defensive, but lineman Eric Hemelgarn. There was, a, I'm sure, fear in his heart that he might be playing his last game in the silver blue, but he will have one more. Here's Solzman looking. A little score up, patterns caught near side. Verstang steps out of bounds Prince to kill the clock, has got the first three. down up around the 46-yard line. And still 53.8 seconds remaining in this ball game, but no timeouts for Morningside. Well, and the, the number twos that are out there right now, they, they need to stiffen up. they got to, you know, let's not celebrate yet. Play every game, play every down. Same and, play, uh, same thing. Yep. We're staying on the catch into Cougar territory at the 48. And they're only taking like four seconds off the clock. At the most, yeah. So a little dinks and dunks. This is the two-minute drill. That's what uh, the Mustangs are in right now. Short yardage, high percentage. Get out of bounds and stop the clock after the catch. Cougars have got their number ones in the deep secondary out there. But again, Solzman trying to take what the 
Cougar defense gives them. Now Sulzman out of the shotgun to wide to either side of the field. Looks near side. He's got time. Steps up and throws over the middle. That ball tipped in the air and caught by Morningside. Inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. And a big gainer down inside the 15 to the 12-yard line. And Morningside not done yet. No, they sure aren't. Good uh you know, good fortune that time for Morningside as the ball was tipped and the, the uh, receiver had to go back to get it, but he did. Remember Taylor a couple years ago. Here's right. Solsma. Solsma, time of the pocket, flush, spins to his left, buying time, cuts at the 20, looking, throws over the middle. The ball is up and not good. Late reaction by Blake Schumacher to knock that ball away from Chad Berg. And we've got a penalty here in the backfield, too, John. This is probably going to be holding against the Mustangs. We're down to 23.9 seconds to play. Three officials. Oh, two flags, actually. Mustangs backing up, though. Mike Patton will let us know. The two fouls, both against the offense. You have a down field, number 59. Appeal is declined. Crystal foul, illegal low block. Offense number 70. 15 yard penalty. So that takes the ball back outside the USF 25 to the 30 yard line. And they're maneuvering the Morningside buses. Yeah, there they come. Yeah, it, on the previous play there, Joe, Matt Muncie doing a fine job at his DN position, created that havoc and flushed the quarterback, and he got taken out. It'll be first and 25 at the 30 yard line now. Sosmut. Wants to throw again, looks to the corners, got a man downfield, and that ball's caught by Berg for a touchdown. So they come right back with a 25-yard touchdown with 17.4 seconds to play. For a Morningside touchdown. Beautiful throw that time by Morningside. Just over the outstretched hands of Stan Jackson. The cornerback had uh, uh, an inside position there, and the receiver was able to go up and get it. Chad Berg got behind the defense just enough. Now it's 43-34, a lead of nine. They can get it down to a seven on a two-point conversion. With 17.4 seconds, I'll tell you what, nobody's left RC Stadium suddenly. Solsma out of the gun, tight formation in, motion left to right. Here's Solsma looking, now flush to his right. Looking, throws over the, he's got a wide open guy. They've lost containment again. Oh, it was Connor Niles, Niles, I believe. Niles. Yep. For the two point conversion. So it's a seven point ball game with Francis 17 Georgia seconds University remaining. Now they got to get the ball 36. back. And don't go away yet. So that will make it the two point conversion 43 36. And who would have believed it about a minute ago, but in effect, Morningside's got a chance to win this ball game with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. But yes. they only have 17 seconds to work with and no timeouts. Well, again, you can put it together pretty easily. A successful onside kick, then you've got a short field. Your passing attack is working for you right now. And it looks like the number ones uh, are probably going to be in again for that D line to provide some additional pressure on that quarterback. But, uh, yeah, it's not over. And Morningside, again, showing its resilience, showing its stick to itiveness. And uh, yeah, they're, not, they're not ready to get on that bus. you got to have the football right here. Basically, game's over if St. Francis recovers. See, the uh, the hands team is in. There's Boswell. There's Chrisman. And uh, Lee Stewart out there. Thinking Jackson. The Green, Schumacher. Green, Green inside the 35. They're not expecting anything People long, of course. 17, Justin Green. So they'll tee it up at the 35 of Morningside. They've got to have the football to have a prayer. Yeah, all USF has out there are receivers and DBs right now on the kick return team. So let's see what Amundsen tries to come up with now. From the right side hash mark, waiting for the go ahead. Got a bunch line up to the left of the wide side of the field. Still here comes Amundsen now, looks and bounces the ball high. That one takes a high bounce. Free ball, scramble for it. I think Morningside's got it with 15 seconds remaining. They have it at the USF 49. The St. Francis thinks they've got it. It's Pearson Harnish. Let's see. It is St. Francis ball. That's it. They took a while. I thought, is that Boswell? Boswell. Up with it? Boswell. Who else? Comes up with Who the else? Ball. Wow. One of the smallest guys out there. By the way, it looks like Jurgensmeyer injured on that scrum at the USF 
48. Well, a couple guys, too. It looks like Rixie's coming up hobbled as well. Well, the good news, I guess you got a couple of weeks to yeah, heal. Yeah, you got to heal. You bet. So USF can just take a knee here, Joe. And that's it. It's in the books. Well, you're worried about Rocky James. The last report is they were taking him to for x-rays at the hospital. Apparently re-aggravating that uh, ankle that kept him out for four games. And he's a guy, a weapon you'd certainly love to have headed to Florida. Now the knee is taken, and that will do it. But Morningside, they never gave up in this contest. But it's St. Francis with a return date to Daytona Beach, Florida in two weeks at 6 o'clock at Municipal Stadium. Final seconds ticking off the clock, and it's the Cougars still ranked number one and still undefeated. They'll take a 13-0 record to Daytona Beach, Florida with them, and we'll see if we can get a, a score and update on that other semifinal game going down in Georgia between Reinhardt and Southern Oregon. Both those teams were undefeated. 43-36 the final as the war finally gives St. Francis the victory. We'll be back with our post-game presentation. This is Cougar Football and Redeemer Radio, WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana. I have a special word for married men, since I'm one of you. Our wives and children need us, faults and all. We, yes, sir. We'll just have noble knights. Never leave your family. You call it a day. Sounds good. Men inherently warriors. Just watch young boys play. How they will quite clock kick off. Copy that. Six o'clock kickoff. The fight that is in us to love, sacrifice for, and protect our wives and children through thick and thin. It is before God that we made a vow when we became united in marriage with our wives. Let's keep it. Quote, so then, what God has united, man must not divide. Mark 10, 9 to 10. I'm Jim Littleton, forming FaithfulFamilies.com. Now, with analysis of the game, what went right and what needs some work, let's go back to the stadium with the voice of the Cougars, Joe Parson of the Redeemer Radio Sports Team. So how you How's that heart? Yeah. Check that blood pressure. <laughs> this one was a heavyweight Titanic matchup here today. Kevin Donnelly said the two best teams in the NAI going head-to-head -head here today. They fought that last year. Turned out to be true, a 42-35 win for St. Francis. They are now 4-0 lifetime against Morningside. All those victories have come here. And Sean, we used to talk about Carroll being a big nemesis and a thorn in the side of St. Francis. And it seemed like every time we played Carroll, it was out uh, in Helena, Montana on that crazy field that they've got. St. Francis never did win out there. And, and the thought was, if we could just get the Saints here to Fort Wayne. Never right. happened, and Morningside's got to be thinking the same thing. We'd love to get St. Francis to Sioux City. Yeah, isn't that the truth? It's it's tough, and uh, and such a long way away to grab a bus. And uh, and again, I can't, those poor kids from Morningside, uh, young men, I should say, uh, that's going to be a very, very long ride home on those buses. But uh, you know what? They, they should hold their heads high because they have absolutely, positively nothing uh, to be upset about uh, or to... Uh, hang their hats on. Sorry, I was distracted by Bill bringing in the uh, the final game stats here, Jim. So let's take a look at the scoring here today. USF wins it by a final score 43-36. It's on to Daytona Beach uh, two weeks from today. <coughs> Cougars uh, looking good at the start of this ball game. They actually went three out in the first possession. So did Morningside. But then when they got the ball back on a short punt at the Morningside 45, it led to a Ferrer to Zach Gegner touchdown catch Ladies all alone in the end zone and uh, the 23 yard to touchdown to toss with Gavin Gardner adding Ladies the extra point the that's key because we would not see him again the rest of the day 7-0 St. Francis as uh, USF would get the ball back and again Ferrer to Boswell on a nice diving play a good spot to place of that football where only Boswell had a chance along the end line to get it 16 yards on a fourth down call at the 606 mark but then the Cougars would have some frustration trying for two-point conversions. They failed, but still led it 13 to nothing. Amundsen would get the Morningside 
Mustangs on the board with a 33-yard field goal at the three-minute mark, and that uh, would make it 13-3. to three. That lead would grow on a uh, touchdown toss. Again, uh, it would be actually a, a green touchdown run for seven yards at the 32nd mark. You're running off tackle, try for two is no good, but it would be St. Francis on top by 16 points. That would be their biggest lead of the day by 16 points at 19 to three. Solzma would uh, get a touchdown toss to Addison. Ross, Ross on the catch, left alone for 24 yards at the 427 mark. Evanson added the extra point to make it 19 to 10. Jenkins then would get on the board on a, at the 11-28 mark on a one-yard plunge up the middle, and suddenly it was a 19-17 ball game in the third quarter early on with uh, the Mustangs trailing it only by two points. But Ferrer would find Boswell on a nifty pass, good for four yards, with 7.26 remaining in the quarter, 25-17. Amundsen would counter with a 39-yard field with a 44-22 mark, and we were looking at a 25-20 ball game, Sean, go into the fourth quarter, and then it got really, really crazy. The uh, Cougars were stopped down deep. You thought it might be uh, the pivotal play of the game. They had the ball down to the morning side 11, but on fourth down failed. So it would be the Mustangs getting the ball back, and that would set up Solzman, finding, we believe, the tight end Barons at the 10-38 mark on a 15-yard toss. Two-point pass made it 28-25 and Morningside had their first lead of the day. But on the subsequent possession, you needed a big Dustin Green would accommodate dashing 61 yards to the house at the 9.27 mark. Try for two was no good, but St. Francis had the lead of 31-28. You talk about craziness. Now, Morningside gets the ball down deep. They've got a chance trailing it by three to tie the game on a 24-yard field goal. No, the snap was mishandled. Uh, the, the spot was no good. The kick was low. Missed field goal. Left it. Advantage St. Francis 31 to 28. And then Green again would run off tackle at the 127 mark to make it 37 28. Again, the Cougars try for two failed. They would get the ball back as it would be a Stan Jackson on a pick six, taking at the 59.9 seconds mark into the. End zone to make it 43-28. Cougars brought out Joe Nepper, but he did not have any more luck than anybody else trying to get the conversion up and in. And Salzman was not done. He had the final say, throwing 35 yards to uh, Berg in the end zone with 17.4 seconds remaining. The uh, try for two was no good. 43-36. They went on side. Grable for it. The USF 48. Cougars got the ball. Game, set, match. And that's it right there. Just a, uh, an update to you from the uh, field. We see a lot of friends, family, and supporters out there right now as the uh, the University of St. Francis uh, really enjoying this uh, this post-game uh, victory celebration out of the field. More to come later there. Uh, an update here, ladies and gentlemen, your players of the game just announced there over the loudspeaker uh, for the offensive squad. Number 17, Justin Green, and we're going to talk about him in a little bit here. And on defense, we had two players of the game that are sharing that uh, that nice um, accolade. Number 41, Wilmer Cole, the defensive back for the University of St. Francis. And then number 98, Eric Hemmelgard, who just had a massive, massive game for the Cougars today. So hats off to all three of those guys as well as the university, uh, rest of the University of St. Francis Cougars. Let's talk about the numbers and uh, the tail of the tape behind this victory. First for Morningside. 26 downs on the day. Rushes, very, very interesting. 27 rushes for 90 yards on the day through the air, 406 yards. The quarterback went 28 completions on 53 with one interception. So total offense for the Morningside Mustangs, 80 plays, 496 yards. Uh, when we look on the other side of the ball, actually first, let's check this as well. Lopsided that uh, we can talk about this possession time 25 minutes and 52 seconds for Morningside um, again that's critical and so when we look at the University of St. Francis here uh, they had uh, less first downs on the day 20 of them on the ground they had 41 touches for 221 yards passes 267 yards so what's that telling us we've got a very balanced attack right there 
through the air. 19 completions on 31 attempts with zero interceptions. So total offense for the St. Francis Cougars, 72 plays, 488 yards. Time of possession for the USF Cougars, 34-08. So dwarfing the, uh, the Mustangs right there. Individually, let's talk about our player of the game on offense. Justin Green had 33 carries had a net of 234 yards on the day with three touchdowns. Remember, he had 296 a year ago against Morningside. That was a school record, and tell you what, uh, he loves to run against the Mustangs. <laughs> yes, he does, and it shows. Ryan Sonotter chipped in with four carries for 18 yards, and uh, let's see, Nick Ferrer uh, got sacked quite a bit. He lost 29 yards today on those sacks, so they're going to have to clean things up right there. But through the air, Nick Ferrer, no interceptions on the day, 267 yards and three touchdown passes with a long of 46. So that just gives you an overview of the uh, the stats for today's game, Joe. You know, a year ago, Trent Solzman threw for 441 yards but lost the football game in the final analysis. Uh, what was his uh, final passing number? Yeah, today? so there's two very interesting things to talk about here. Through the air, Trent Solzman had uh, 28 completions on 53 Attempts with one interception and 406 yards. Now, here's something very special. The stud running back, Bubba Jenkins, right there. 24 uh, carries for a net of 73 yards. And that was it. They were able to hold the stud running back from a morning side to under 100 yards today. That was huge. No question about it. Might check uh, some of the defensive numbers down there if you show them... Uh yeah, unfortunately, these are just kind of the, the quickie stats. So for as, as tackles go, uh, we have Lee Stewart uh, with 13 tackles and Pearson Harnish with 11. Um, and then it gets into uh, some of the um, the scoring opportunities that you had already talked about there, Joe. So, so the stage yeah. is set. It'll be a return visit for the University of St. Francis Cougars. They won it all a year ago down in Florida. Now they'll have a chance to repeat. Remember, some years back, three straight trips to Tennessee, 0 for 3. And now a chance to win two straight national championships, but it won't be easy as uh, the combatant on the other side will be either Southern Oregon or Reinhardt. Remember, he played down in Georgia a year ago in the semifinals, and the Cougars played well. But uh, St. Francis has never played the Raiders out of Southern Oregon. We'll see how that one fared today between two unbeatens. Raiders came in at 12-0. and Reinhardt was 11-0. and But we know that one of the final berths is filled in the Cougars. 13-0 now, ranked number one with a chance to repeat. Two weeks from today, 6 o'clock, the kickoff at Municipal Stadium in Daytona Beach, Florida. We'll be there, Sean and I, 545 with a kickoff. And now the big question now is how many troops will Kevin Donnelly have? Will the two weeks allow some, some healing? Gavin Gardner, questionable at this point. Rocky James went to the hospital with x-rays on his re-injured ankle. And Justin Green, who came out early in the first half, but Sean ran after that for 61 yards for a touchdown and had another big run, and uh, I, I think he's a resilient young man. Well, he is, and that's all heart and desire there, Joe. I mean, he was if he was running injured, uh, you, you, you saw some of that maybe a little bit earlier, uh, but on that 61-yard uh, scamper, and he just...